Love is Blind seems to be a more infectious disease than the one that we had in 2020 that kept us all at home. I had no idea, but apparently it's not just for English people. They've had Love is Blind Japan, Love is Blind Brazil, and also the new Love is Blind Sweden, which is just in its first season. Now a lot of people have asked me to do this video and I said the same thing I said to them. I don't speak inte svenska. In Swedish. That's a joke because I don't speak Swedish. But then they said to me, hey, old grandpa, you can actually get it in English. Lo and behold, I looked at the whole Love is Blind Sweden and we're about to do the deepest dive into this because it is very different from the English one. There are some positives, like people are very much more respectful. Girls and girls do not seem to fight with each other. They seem to understand that this is a show and not just a WWE match in which you need to pull the person underneath the stage. There are also weird negatives. I guess where a lot of the people talk about physicality in a show called Love is Blind, literally the purpose of the show is to defeat that stereotype and most of the people on that show have the same issue, not physically attracted to this person. I don't know. Maybe Love is Blind season one was like this. I have no idea. All I know is that we're about to get into the deepest of dives though. So get your popcorn, get comfy and Let's go. Sweden has wait, wait, wait. Hi, let me just pull you aside for a second from the craziness that I normally delve into to tell you about this. If you haven't heard about a VPN by now, maybe you live under a rock and are being held captive. So I'll have to let that slide. But just in case you haven't, Private Internet Access is a VPN that offers online security and privacy like no other. Whether you're online, doing some shopping, bank transfers, or transferring very important files. Actually, it's one of the few VPNs that offer P2P file sharing. I think a VPN is an essential tool for every internet user. Private Internet Access hides your IP address while encrypting your internet connection to ensure your private business stays private from things like service providers, network admins, and government sensors. You wouldn't want to use a bot bathroom stall with the door wide open, right? So if you're not going to expose your bum to people, why would you expose your data to people online? Lots of people use a VPN to change their country's IP address and access shows or movies only available in other countries. I recently found a dating show called The Undateables, which is such a refreshing break from the reality trash I'm normally used to watching. Sadly though, it's not available in New Zealand. But if I change my IP address to the United Kingdom and log on to Netflix, I instantly have access to The Undateables. It's risk-free to sign up since they offer a 30-day money back guarantee, 24 seven customer support, and it's available on all devices and an unlimited amount of devices. Go to https colon slash slash piavpn.com slash 16 Leo to get 83% of private internet access plus four additional months free. That comes out to just $2 and three cents a month. Thanks private internet access for partnering with me on today's video. Follow me on my Instagram at 16 Leo. I will go on Love is Blind South Africa if that ever becomes a thing. Or maybe even Australia, I don't know. Do they have a Love is Blind UK? I would, I, you know. <laughs> what? Also, if you like the video by the end of it, please hit that subscribe. We're past 600,000. That's way too many people watching me. I feel nervous. Just as a little tidbit, every time some character says a name that's not Love is Blind but sounds close, I'm going to put that up on the screen because Love is Blind is a good name, but some of the names on this show that these guys talk about, way better. Love is the blindest. Oh my God, I can't wait to see like what Nick Lachey looks like. You know, Swedish Nick Lachey, that's, this is new for me. Sweden has one of the world's highest percentage of singles. Is that Nick Lachey? Oh my god, he looks- he's got a gap tooth and he's- That's not him. Okay, that's the contestant. I'm so sorry. I thought that was Nick Lachey. I'm just excited. Hey gang! A warm welcome to the world's biggest love experiment. Oh, They don't have a Nick Lachey, they just got Jessica Almonds. Jessica Almenas. I am so sorry to any Swedish people watching this video. I'm gonna butcher your beautiful language. Don't, don't. Please include me in your country when I visit. I'm so sorry. That's the host. She's barely in the show. She barely says anything. And unlike Vanessa Lachey, she doesn't seem to get up in everyone's business. So I appreciate her. And there's no Nick Lachey. So this is already, I like this one more than the, the American one. I like it. Warm welcome to the world's biggest love experiment. Love is blind. <laughs> As usual, she comes out and she says, Hey, you blind people, love is blind. So get in those pods and start dating. 
start mating and dating and masturbating, okay? So she just, she does the classic thing. Everyone's like clapping, like she made up the show or the concept. They all say yes, because if someone's like, no, I thought this was the dairy, what? Then it would be pretty crazy, so. Here, you're gonna choose someone to marry without knowing what that person looks like. What's important to you when it comes to intimacy? So she basically explains that you're not gonna be able to see the other people and like already half the contestants like, what? The fuck does that, why? I'm trying to have sex with someone who I find really good looking. Is that Tinder? Tinder, okay, Tinder. I think I have sex quite a lot. I'm just a very horny person. <laughs> so I wanna have a lot of sex in a relationship. I love Sweden. My nigga. <laughs> not because of that. Gay! I love the fact that people are so open that within the first episode, the first conversation, you can be like, here's what I need, brother. I'm horny, I got vacancies, and I need people to enter the motel and stay there for a night. You know what I mean? All right, thank you, chief. That's what I need. I don't care what you look like. Can you fuck me through a wall? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah! That's great. Same for me, actually. Oh, and then this woman got so happy that the guy said he also likes sex that she turned into some sort of bud with like a really wide mouth. I mean, I don't know what the standards are in Sweden, but you like sex too? So anywhere else in the world, you'll be fine. You find the man of your dreams literally can throw a rock and hit another rock next to a man. And that would be your soulmate. I'm very happy that her standards are, can he have sex and does he like it? But it's a good way to start the show, guys. I don't eat red meat, just so you know. I'm gonna have a very hard time living with a vegan girl. Next, we meet Katya, who will actually feature in this episode, and Johan, who almost does. Sorry to spoil it, but I couldn't actually show you nine hours of the show. I had to condense it. Some of the contestants didn't make it. Johan almost gets there, but he's not quite good enough. He's sort of the guy who's like, I should have done this, and then didn't. And then they bring him back for like half an episode, and he's like, I should have married you. And then he leaves, and nothing else happens. So that goes nowhere. I just want to tell you that now. I love meat and eat a lot. I kept that in though, because that is hilarious. I love meat and I eat a lot. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha, maybe you should have been on the other side of the wall with the other guys. I'm so immature. I'm Chris Ali, 29 years old. I'm studying interior design and I live in Sudingburg, Stockholm. So now we have another contestant, Chris Lee. This is the first time I've ever seen a hyphen, not in the middle of someone's name, but towards the end of it. So already I was like, whoa. And then she said she lived in Stockholm, but also did some shit like, I don't know if she's doing a spell or Swedish people point out where Stockholm is. Stockholm, it's this way. I don't really get it, but um, very, She's got two things that I've never seen before, so that's good. That's really good. Hello. I want to find a person to come home to and feel at home with, no matter where we are. I'm very calm, but would you bring out the adventurous side with me? No. Okay. <laughs> so Chris Lee just wants a really nice person, clearly, as we all do. Again, this is why I love Love is Blind Sweet. And I think that honestly, upon watching it, I was like, ooh, these people are pretty harsh. And then I was like, no, nah, that's way better. In America, you get like the first four episodes, they're still in the pods because nobody can actually tell each other what they really want. There's a lot of miscommunication, lack thereof communication. In Sweden, he's like, hey, I like adventurous people. Are you adventurous? She's like, hell no, next. And both of them are like, okay, well, whatever the word for bye in Swedish is. Bye, I don't- I don't have a conventional family. I have a dog. I basically have a child with four legs. That's not gonna work with my two cats. I've never been comfortable around animals. Okay, so then she says that she has a child with four legs and I thought, wow, I'm sorry for your child. But then she said it's a dog and honestly, honestly, I would like to issue a body scan to anyone who compares a, a baby to a pet. I don't know how those two things are the same, but I can tell you something, they're not. Okay. <laughs> you never want to have children then? No, I don't. If that's something you really want, then I'm the wrong guy. Priscilla then gets defeated by the fact that someone doesn't want kids after maybe five minutes of talking through a wall. She's just bombarded. She's sad. She wants to find her guy through a wall. Also, hedja. I think that means bye in Swedish. Or maybe that's oh, really bad. Hey door. Hey door. I'm just a hater. I'm Chris Ali. 
Chris Ali. Chris Ali. It's with a hyphen. Great. I'll call you Chrissy. Call me Chrissy. What's your name? Rasmus. Can you do that? My name's Darren. I'll call you Dale. I'm gonna start doing that when people give me names that I can't remember. What's your name? Ben. I'm gonna call you Chris. I know many Chris's. So I'm gonna call you Chris too. Actually, every guy I know is called Chris. That way I can't mess that up. See you, Chris. Or whatever your name was. That's great. I like it already. This relationship is off to a great start. She meets a guy called Rasmus, who's also, I love the names in Sweden. Rasmus. I don't know. I, it just sounds like, hey, Razzy, how you doing? How old are you? I'm 29. Okay. How about you? I turn 32 on Wednesday. Oh, no, now I know your star sign. Told myself I didn't want to know that. Then I'll be like, yeah, typical Pisces. She's like one of them Instagram girls who's like, I have a fur baby. Also, if your star sign doesn't match up, we're not compatible because the fucking stars said it, okay? When I look up and I see the stars, they don't align. And if they don't align, neither do we. You like my fur baby? It's like a real baby, just furrier. If I had a werewolf and a child, it would be a were child. Okay, I got one. I don't know, man. Chris Lee, damn. She's willing to compromise on her name, but not her star sign. That's, that's not the first thing that I thought she'd say when he said his birthday is on Wednesday. I thought she was going to be like, happy birthday. She's like, oh, Pisces. Yuck. If you were born four months later, we'd be married by now. Ugh. Too bad you weren't born the right time. I'm a guy who has feelings on the outside. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 uh, yo. Are you a morning person as well? Then he responds by saying he's a guy who feels things and she just breaks down like apparently in Sweden Guys feeling things is more of a physical problem than an emotional one. Okay, jeez All he said was I'm a guy who feels and she absolutely starts crying and is like I'm in love with you now And tattoos? Do you have tattoos? Yes. Um, yeah, I have a lot of tattoos. I have a sleeve. I have two <laughs> How the hell did they find you? Yeah, how did they find you? Oh my god, you're a morning person person you have tattoos and you exist does all three things that chrysaly needs to be in love you exist you have tattoos and you wake up chrysaly's dating standards very good chris every guy i know is called chris how the hell did they find you god i can't handle this this was a great conversation yes i agree was it though was it she just said are you a morning person you said yes then you said you're a man who feels things i didn't even know if this is like a physical like you're just saying like i fill people up what are you trying to say not only was she happy she literally did the matrix she was like oh this man is anita max Ween. anita max Ween. i'll never say Hey door. Hey door to this man. I'll never say hey door to him. Oh, because I love him. Because he has tat he has two tattoos. Two arms full of tattoos. Give me I'm overwhelmed by thoughts and feelings. Aren't we all, Chrysaly? Aren't we all? Love is Blind Sweden has the best translation ever. I'm overwhelmed by thoughts and feelings. I wish people would just come out and like say things on a rudimentary scale. I am not happy because I'm feeling sad right now and I am overwhelmed by thoughts and feelings in my head. Do you understand? I need space so I will sit. Thank you for listening. People just need to start doing that. This is good. We had the same deal breakers. I was like, fuck, we're so alike. I like to have a lot of balls in the air. <laughs> I'm not trying to be immature, but when guys like, I like a lot of meat, I like a lot of balls in the air. What am I supposed to do, man? I don't care. It's funny. Basically, it's like playing cat and mouse. You're supposed to be hunted. You can't just expose yourself because that's boring. That's illegal too, just by the way. But I know what he's trying to say. Rasmus is actually the most sought after guy on the show. He's the sexy. He's a sex bomb. And I like his hair, but, uh, you know, I mean, damn, they, they really, they, hey, man. You, what, you could. And you know what? Don't, don't. Doesn't matter, okay? I got your tongue. It doesn't even matter what I say. Rasmus is actually the best looking of them. I'm very superficial myself, and so you might still want to, uh, sneak in some details of how you look. See, unlike, uh, the American Love is Blind, in which every guy's like, <laughs> Look, man, I'm just so used to our girl saying this. I'm gonna do things that are a bit different. I'm not gonna worry about how she looks. And then you have these guys who are like all six foot something, probably never had a problem dating anyway, just had a problem settling down. You need to find those Americans who are like, my name Cletus, I'm here. I need one. What's Carl Love blind? My mama's blind. Is she gonna be on? Okay, my name's Cletus. 
I'm five foot four, I like pigs. You need that on the show. Cause if you get that and that's Love is Blind and you find Cletus with someone from New York, then it's like a great show. What they have is the complete opposite and they have people lying about a lot of things that clearly matter later on in the show. Rasmus, for all the quote unquote douchebaggery of saying stuff like I'm really superficial, the honesty actually really helps. And we'll see it be proven later on in this episode. Rasmus saying I'm superficial or some of the characters being like, yeah, I do worry about looks and physicality and sex and things like that actually goes a long way with communication. So I applaud them in reality for actually being honest. At the same time, this is Love is Blind, literally the show's whole point is to not be superficial, so coming on here and saying that is... That's a gangster. Like any height requirements or anything else that you want to check. Well, I think slightly taller men are attractive. Well, I'm 6'3", so that's not a problem, really. You know what? I appreciate her for saying slightly. I appreciate that. Me being a short person, I'm four foot six. These are miniature sets, and it is hard. The hardest thing in the world is being a guy under 5'5". Five five. Except if you're Danny DeVito, then life is just easy. But <clears throat> she said slightly taller. She's 5'5". Five five. Hopefully she's not talking like slightly total, like six foot five or up. But Rasmus doesn't have a problem because he's six three. So he just pulls that out of his bag and he's in. No, that's not a problem. I'm five five. Oh, we're totally compatible. I don't have children and I've never been married. But it turns out there's another guy in Katya's life and his name is Christopher. And he's, I think, 6'4". He also has never been married and hasn't had children. And as soon as he says that, the uplifting music comes on as if like Sweden people are like, never married. What? No children? No man? Yeah. Happy. I want children. Yeah. But I feel I'm 34 years old in my passport, but 25 years old in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not how that works. I get what you mean, though. I get it. I feel like I'm 12. Yeah. Not like that, but you know what I mean? Like, I'll watch SpongeBob all day if you let me. I don't care. I love that shit. But realistically, I need to pay bills. So. SpongeBob don't help with that, really does it? Sorry, I went on a tangent there. The point is, it's actually another thing about dating, I think, and I hope that shows start to perpetuate. Something that I do very much like about this show, not like the American version, is people who are in their 30s are not seen as like throwaways or people like, oh, you're old. She said she's 34 and nobody was like, Ugh! in America, literally the dudes who are like 32 are like, you old head, what are you even doing here? Why don't you go back to your freaking 1930s automobile, you old head? Do you know what I mean? Like there's a a contestant who doesn't make it onto this this dating pool but he's 43 and he was on the show and I think that it's probably a good thing to start normalizing the fact that people make it in their own time it's not like a uh, oh you need to be 28 and married because that's not the case for everyone I understand biologically speaking for a woman is different and I'm, I'm saying within reason here but like it used to be people get married at 17. Now we're all accepting that's crazy. So let's start accepting the fact that, oh, okay, in your 30s is a still a decent time to find the person you love. It's decent enough to discover yourself and discover your partner and be like, hey, that's cool. So I applaud these people for going on at this age. Hopefully nobody judged them for their age. I also want to be in love and travel. Exactly, same. Before looking after a kitty for 18 years. <laughs> kitty, funny, that's what I always say. Exactly. This is, this is some really random comments. I just want to... <sighs> How, how comfortable is Love is Blind that every girl on the show in any country ever can take off her shoes and just expose her bare ass feet to the wall? This is not every show I've ever watched in the pods. Like everyone's so comfortable that they're like, this is my home now. <laughs> If someone was just filming me on a dating show, I wouldn't like just exp I don't know. I know that's not a big deal, but like, y'all is real comfortable in them pods, man. But too comfortable. Oh, anyway, they're talking about kids. When I was 19, I moved to India. I see. Um, I worked in Bollywood. Wow. So the next two people we meet are Oscar, who to me, seriously, is like Swedish Jim from The Office. So I might get those mixed up. And Merdia. Mer I modeled and Mer acted and all Mer sorts of Media? other things. Mer I'm from Afghanistan, where we watch a lot Medja. of Bollywood. We have similar experiences. Medja. Okay, I'm gonna go to M until I can say it right. But Oscar, or Jim, and Medja. 
Pam over there are finally getting along. And she says that she watched a lot of Bollywood. She grew up with it. She moved to India and that was her cultural experience. And Oscar trying to uh, fit along, get along, say something that actually makes sense, says this. We have similar experiences. We have similar experiences. I didn't move to India. That's much cooler. I moved to the US when I was 18. Really? But I've wanted to go to India. You stretch that like spandex, my friend. That's that's amazing. We have a similar experience. You went to you were in Bollywood. Well, I went to America. What? 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 That's like saying I went to see the FIFA World Cup, and you're like, man, I saw this guy do a freestyle swimming event once. That's pretty much the same because it's a sport. There are two at the top of my list, Oscar and Johan. I've played basketball at an elite level for 17 years. For real? Yes. I kept this scene in. This is the only other scene with Johan. He's flexing his basketball playing skills, which is why he's on Love is Blind Sweden. He says he's been a pro b-ball player for 17 years, and she says, really? And she gets so excited by the fact he's tall, which just is the shallowness of that pool is just, I could drown in it, but barely. You know what I mean? Imagine Michael Jordan on Love is Blind being like, yo man, I won six titles with Chicago. I play with Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. I pretty much reinvented basketball, made it pop popular for everyone else. And the woman behind the thing is like, So you're tall? So you're tall? Pretty tall. You know, I love tall guys. I would love to see a girl who is on one of these shows who's like, you know, contrary to popular belief, I love short guys. I really do. I like it. I would love to see that at this point. Not gonna happen. No, not gonna happen. <laughs> It's not a big stretch to imagine that, lady. Good, good. See you then. We will, for sure. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Next pops in. Two dates, probably. Only, only rivaling Shane, my other favorite contestant in Love is Blind. Because this man, he looks, and I don't mean this in a negative way, because I love him. He looked like a fish. He just got like that very emotional fish. I could Finding Nemo based off of his face. His name is Sergio, and he's from Barcelona. Well, he's not, but he lived in Barcelona for two years, and now he's in Sweden. He speaks Swedish, Spanish, and English sometimes, but he's also crazy. Who do we have here? I can't reveal that. Then we'd have to get married. I have to play a little hard to get. God, the girls are going to get so pissed off. Yeah, so uh, Sergio comes in with this attitude and he's like, yo man, I can't even reveal my name. It starts with a, you don't get to know. I'm play a little hard to get. Nobody even knows this man and he's already playing hard to get through a wall. That's crazy. His level of ego is out there. Sergio is 37 and he is an ex-DJ turned football coach. <laughs> Can you imagine being like, coach, how do we win this game? And he's like, chicka, chicka, what? I don't know. I uh, just started. I don't know. Have you had Sergio? It's a big no for me. I thought he had a big ego. Do you usually date this many girls at once? I'm so good looking, you know? Oh, God. Come on. Yeah, so Sergio has a uh, very specific sense of humor. A very specific sense of humor that seems to uh, ruffle a few feathers, to say the least. What's your name? Secret. Did you say your name? I've had that question so many times. Oh. If I say everything now, we won't have anything to talk about. Come on, it's mysterious. Yeah, so he's trying to be a mystery man. He's trying to go in there with a game plan. Clearly, Sergio, like a football coach. I work as a football coach. Before that, I was a DJ. He had a game plan. Everyone else was like, hello, this is my name. I feel things. He was like, I'm not even going to tell you what I feel, who I feel, how tall I am, or who I am. You might as well be talking to Alexa, Swedish version, because it's because I'm just not here. I'm like the Dark Knight. You like resistance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He looks like he's always holding a fart. Like he's just like. That's very much my type. Someone who has a bit of energy, who's adventurous. So somehow Sergio, who looks like that and also has the attitude like that, meets this girl called Amanda, who happens to be, I think in every Love is Blind that I've seen, probably the best person. I, I genuinely think that. I think that she just seems to be very confident of herself, so much so that she can let other people breathe. And when Sergio comes out and pulls all his BS, she doesn't seem to mind it. She actually likes the energy. Sergio also does say his name to her, even though he hasn't said it to anyone else. So I think he likes her back. Well, I hope I get to meet you again. Me too. <laughs> what a difference. 
Oh yeah? It was like going from being a missionary to slamming Viagra. Nice. I'm using that surgery. I don't know where or why or how or with who or why or what the fuck. But that's a good one. Psh, dating. It's like going missionary to going to the butt position. In one feel swoop, I'm in the butt. Sergio. Lived in Barcelona for two years, got kicked out for saying stuff like that. It was like going from being a missionary to slamming Viagra. <laughs> now I'm going home to masturbate like a maniac. Uh, only in Sweden can you say that amongst friends and nobody is like, bro, please never do that again. Never say those words again, please, thank you. Everyone's laughing like, ha ha ha, he's a masturbator. I speak Italian. He's not, he's Spanish? Oh shit. Don't forget to miss me. Do you say that to everyone? No, just to you, Katya. <laughs> See ya. Meanwhile, while Sergio is rizzing up Amanda, Rasmus is now rizzing up Chris Lee and Katya. And Katya really likes him. I was sitting there smiling throughout the whole date. I mean, this might sound weird, but can you please tell me who it is? Unfortunately, just like every love is blind, we have the, uh, I, th I feel like every, Love is Blind has one episode of one part dedicated to two girls who are like, hey, well, he's dating you as well. He said he was just dating me. Even though we're on a show called Love is Blind where all the contestants date each other, I didn't know he was dating you too. And they just do that. However, this is good because each of these Swedish contestants handle it way differently to the American ones. In Sweden, they talk it out and they're both not calling the dude a dick for dating multiple people when you're in the pods and should be doing that. And also they don't fight with each other. So they're really pretty respectful about the whole situation. Unlike America, who's like, you bitch. Talking to him behind my back. I knew she was, I knew she was traitor. Over here, they're just like, hey, who is it? Ah, oh, that sucks. It is very melodramatic, I will say this though. They made it sound like Rasmus has not only dated these two, but married each of them, had families, and now has to pick which family he's going to be with. But if it's someone I have a connection with, I want to let that go. Rasmus, fuck. And that's your favorite. Oh, hell. He's so fuck. Can, can someone write that on a shirt, please? He's so fuck. Or he's so fuck. I would, I'd like that, and then I have a, she's so, fuck, as well. That would be cool. I'd like that. Don't cry. We're all different. That's how it is. Oh, fuck, I was thinking, please don't say that name. Oh. That is the appropriate reaction to the sentence. I was thinking, please don't say that name. I can say a different name if it, uh, Je Je Jeremy. Is it Jeremy? No, I just said who it was. I don't know. How else are you supposed to react to that sentence? God, that's tough. He's so fucking lovable, I know. I know. Rasmus is Katya's number one. She thinks he's just as great as I do. Rasmus tazzed everyone there, seriously. Within a few days, he was the one who picked everyone and she's just having real trouble. She just, she likes him. It's been two days and she can't get over him. I don't know. I feel like if I was in the pods and I was told talking to someone and I'm like, yo girl, what to do, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, please stop doing whatever voice that is. And I say, I'm so sorry, but I like you. And then two days later, she's like, but I also like Derek. Then I'll be like, oh, all right. Well, that seems, that seems fine since we're on a show and you're allowed to do this. That's fine. So I'm not gonna hold this against you and I'm just gonna go back to living normal life instead of crying over a person I haven't seen through a wall because I'm not that desperate that I'm going to fall in love with a wall. I can't call dibs either. No, because he's a human. It's awesome that you have a sleeve, you know? Having a double sleeve, I think it looks incredible when you walk next to people who also have that. Ah, but so the next day, Rasmus talks to Chrissy, or Chrissy. You know, he has to rizz her up to get her back on his side. So he says, I have two sleeves and I walk next to people. And she's like, what? That's even cooler. From what I already know now, I want to explore things more for sure. But I have to see her first. <laughs> She's of Estonian descent. I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's a country. I, you know. Bro, imagine if he was on Love is Blind Africa and stuff. She'd be like, I'm from Senegal. And then his, he would, you'd literally see an explosion and his head is just on the floor and he's like, what? 
what? She's a seagull? <laughs> Just blown up. I never thought that like a show could be more superficial than the American version. But the dude being like, I don't know if I love her. I gotta see her first. In a show specifically designed to negate that is just, like I said, it's the most gangster shit I've ever heard. Like he walked into the show and he's like, when do we get to see these bitches? And then they were like, uh, okay, you'll be in a pod for three weeks. Did anybody tell him what show he's on? He thinks this is too hot to him? Oh, that's why. No. She's of Estonian descent. <laughs> I don't know how it affects your looks. I have no idea. It's not a condition. Being Estonian is not a condition. It's not, <laughs> not like having tuberculosis. Being, it's not like, ooh, I'm African. <gasps> Are you okay? Like, <laughs> it's fine. You'll be fine. Don't know a secret? Yes. I look forward to this date the most. Same here. Damn, ooh, my heart is pounding. I like how they gave Sergio a very distinct voice. Everyone else, like, I, I they sort of blend together. Sergio's voice actor is like this chain smoking, like, he's, he's, the voice actor has attitude too. He's like, hey, nice to meet you. Like, he sounds very flavorful, characteristically. I like that. So, Christopher, Dan, there's something there that kind of makes me forget about time and space. So it looks like everything actually is worked out with no beef at all between any of the contestants. Priscilla and Rasmus seem to be going strong because they both have tattoos. Katya, who likes taller men, likes Christopher, who is a taller man. And Sergio and Amanda are going strong, actually. I haven't seen much else from Amanda throughout the whole show. They didn't show her even really dating other people. But when it came to Sergio, she was like, there's plenty of fish in the sea, but the one who is beached on land is mine, Sergio. I manifested a certain name before I entered into all this. Can you guess the name? Lucas? Yes. No. Yeah. You get it. <laughs> The show always constantly mind boggles me between like how mature some of the contestants are and then just how stupid <laughs> some of the shit is. So Amelia is like, I manifested a name before coming here and that name was Lucas and here you are. I, like I, I understand that, but that would be kind of like me being in, in New Zealand being like, oh, Amy, I know way too many of those. I don't even want to know most of them. Sorry. Keep my lip. You ain't no player. Do you know what I mean? It's too many. Like, if you have to know the person's last name just to differentiate, the amount of Joshes in this country, you could put one in the in the ground here and nobody would notice because they'd be like, there's more Joshes. <laughs> yeah, hello, 911? So having Lucas in Sweden, come on. Come on. Come on. You need a name like Magnus. That's, a, that's probably a common name there too. You need Sergio in Sweden. That thing blew my mind. Sergio from Sweden? I don't know, man. That's like having Mario from China. Mario Lee. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not kidding. What? Yes, exactly. Before I went into this, I was standing in my apartment in Solna thinking, I feel that I will meet a Lucas. That's crazy. That's just actually crazy to just stand in your apartment being like, I'm gonna meet a Jesse. And then everyone's like, whoa, we need to take you to the hospital, bro. This is weird, weird energy coming from you today. And I really just wanna knock down this wall and hug you. Oh my God. Rasmus, I'm like in love with- So yeah, Lucas and Emily, I mean, sorry. Lucas and Amelia seem to be having a thing here because she guessed his name through a wall like a magician and he's just, he's taken back by that. Meanwhile, Rasmus and Chrysalie are now falling in love. She's just starting to cry, falling in love with him because he has a lot of balls in the air. Feelings, two arm sleeves, and can wake up. With you. <laughs> love is on its way. That's a better name for the show. Can someone, can we put that up? Not Love is Blind, Love is on its way. Maybe even another show, Love is in the way. Get it out of here so I can have hot sticks. That's the new name for Too Hot to Handle. Love is on its way, but I can't connect in a deep and emotional way with two people at the same time. I got dumped. No. Oh, no. After Chrysalie says that she loves Rasmus, he <laughs> smiles like a child and it's very cute. And he has to make a decision on who to say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going with. So he picks Katya and she gets dumped. She's sad, but she has Christopher. Bye Rasmus. I don't get it. I'm trying to paint a picture of what she looks like but it's so damn difficult. That would, then it would be very hot to paint a picture, bro. But look, honestly, you don't even need to paint a picture. Just don't even imagine her. 
Oh, I forgot, this was Love is Blind in Sweden, where if she's off Estonian descent, you think that's a condition, and now you're trying to figure out if she's healthy or not. I'm really nervous about that step. You know what? When you see her, I think you're going to appreciate everything about her. Oh, I just, I just noticed he has the ascot. I haven't seen that since Fred from Scooby-Doo. I didn't know that wasn't even a real choice for attire. This is like you wore a headband like Tupac and it slipped off onto your neck. All right, good work, Christopher. What a look that is. Swedish people like that? Can, can any Swedish people in the comments tell me, do you guys wear ascots a lot or is that just a headband gone rogue? What is... So scared of it. I'm so shallow. K-R-I-S-S-E hyphen L-Y. Chrissy. And then hyphen L-Y. Is she Chinese? Bruh, firstly, Estonian and China. Okay. Bruh. There's so much wrong with what you said. I don't even know how to break it down. One, admitting that you're shallow, actually not a bad thing. Believe it or not, I feel like if you can admit that, then you can get past that. Secondly, chrysaly and then having a hyphen and then thinking she's Chinese is, again, some of the most gangster level of thought I've ever heard a man say. I don't know if you watched Jet Li and thought he was an airplane or something, but that's not true. Um, no, she's not Chinese, but I, li I like it. He's, he thought that her last name was like imported into her first name. And he was like, oh, well, she's got Lee at the end of it. You know, Southern people also are called Lee a lot, just by the way. <laughs> so Cletus Lee is not Chinese, I'm just saying. But I would love a Chinese person called Cletus Lee. Can we make that happen? Thank you. Hello. It turns out Rasmus is worried about the fact that she might not look good because she's Estonian slash and or Chinese. But he's going for it with it. His willingness to see will actually prevail. Who's in the building? So Sergio has actually been talking to two people. We don't see it much for some reason, but only towards the end of the episode, we see Sergio, who actually uh, was very good with Amanda, also has another contestant who is Persian in his mindset. It's that girl who likes tall men, so she already would hate my boy Sergio. Is it Serge? Yes. My Persian princess. I just want to hold your hand. I'm standing in front of the wall. I lied. I completely forgot about this woman. He's actually chatting up three women because he's from Barcelona. Oh, sorry. He lived in Barcelona. So he's a Latario. I'm so... Good at words. Turns out that Sergio has to make a decision and he leaves the arena looking like someone who had just played 90 minutes of football and lost. And it's all over. Happy faces right around the ground. What are your thoughts, Sue? I might have feelings for Amelia, but there's something similar with Carolina. There's a small arc between Lucas, Amelia, and someone called Carolina that doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't really matter because it's not big enough, but the show had to full nine episodes of runtime. So a lot of the beefs and like small mishaps are just that very small. There is no fighting on the show. There is definitely some twists and turns that I didn't see coming, but at no point did any of the contestants fully disrespect each other, bar one instance that is coming up very soon. I'm a very emotional person, so I don't want to hurt anyone. I need to take the bull by the horns. It feels like I've known you for such a long time. I would give the show like a hundred bucks if it was like it showed him in the mirror <laughs> and he's just talking to himself, trying to hype himself up. I've known you for such a long time. You've always been beautiful in my eyes. And realistically, if I could, I'd put a ring on it. But I know I can't do that because you're me in a mirror. And every time I put a ring on a mirror, it just clinks and falls. R.I.P. There's no one I laugh with as much as I do with you. I don't know how to word this, but you're a fucking gem. When they cut to the wall, you see how stupid it is. I, I kind of forget how stupid it is. I think the first intonation of Love is Blind had, and I would have hoped had some semblance of you could see the person, like just even their outline or something, but just literally being like, I love you. Or, or like, you know, literally being like this. Hey, you're sexy. The things that I would do for you, I would marry you if I could. Are you, hello? Oh my God. It's not on, guys. Nobody was in the room. Nobody told me that. 
This is so tough. There's another girl here that I've kind of fallen for. I have to give myself the chance to go for the one I really have my sights on. So, uh, the Lotario he is from Barcelona, he actually says to these two other girls, Ex Alexandria and Camille, that he's got his sight set on Amanda and uh, they need to they need to leave. So he's been dating and he's he feels sad, but it's the right thing to do. And he makes that decision and he tells them. And that's Amanda. Actually, yesterday, Yes, I'll tell them. I told her that I'm only seeing her. I lied, he's a D-bag, because he told her yesterday that he was only seeing her and only today tied up the loose ends. Good work, buddy. A bit late, but at, le at least he did it, though. At least he didn't continue. It was a day late. Better late than never. But he got the message across, although it is a day late and people are gonna find out about it. So I feel a bit like the villain. So I don't want to hurt anyone. Bye. Bruh, this is so different to any of the American versions where like, Janice, I'm sorry. And then you hear her turn in, like go into Super Saiyan and start throwing things around. Like, you bitch, you lost the best thing that ever happened to you. I hope you find what you're looking for, but you won't. And then just go cry. It's way different to hear like, good luck. Uh, yeah, you too. That's crazy matureness. Ooh, he's such a special character. You're back early. I got dumped. Do you want to say who it was? Sergio. God, she's blinking so much like she processed that. I know, you're gonna find out something about Sergio. He is, uh, he's got some things to work on, man. Anybody who's a DJ slash football coach definitely has some things to work on in their life. So Sergio is a bit, he's a day late. You just gotta give him time to figure out who he is. But man, that is not a good look from Amanda. She's blinking way too hard. Hey. I'm here because my date has chosen someone else. What? No, you got dumped too? He's two people in 10 minutes. I like how this woman came out and said it in the nicest way. She's like, my date has chosen someone else. And then and then the blonde girl was like, you got dumped too? Yo, like a poo poo. You got, you, did someone dropped you like shit in the toilet. Oh, you're useless. Me too. But apparently this man has been like hyper dumping people because they both walked into the room virtually the same time. So he was like, literally went from one pod, you suck, and then went to the next, you also suck. And she just, they both left at the same time, I guess. You're the one who's left, Amanda. He said he wasn't seeing anyone else. But he isn't now. Don't make a big deal out of it. He can date as many as he wants. Problem is that he said otherwise. Uh, in a, in a absolute move of, I, I, like, I don't know. I think I fell to the floor when I saw this. The person who he dumped defended him by telling the other girl not to make a big deal about it because she and him are the only two left and he did choose you. In what American television show, in, have you ever seen Love is Blind be like, yo, I'm not with you. And then the girl goes to the other girl and she's like, well, you've got a great man. And I know you do. Go get him, tiger. Damn, I gotta move to Stockholm. Head and stint, formerly Hellstrom. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Ah uh, yeah, so now they start proposing. Rasmus and Chrysalie are in it to win it. And every time they say their full names on the show, I'm just like, whoa, that is so cool. They got cool names, man. Rasmus, Master, Will you take Chrysalie, Brisk, Brisk, Scruggle, Volgen? Sorry, Volvo. Oh. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. Another first, or at least very rare occurrence, is when the girl says, will you marry me on the show? But on Sweden, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And I think it shouldn't be a big deal anyway in life. Honestly, I think it's really cute if a girl actually asks. Maybe I'm old fashioned because I, I want to ask, but like if someone beats me to it, that's cool too. Not a problem. I'm just saying. I have no idea what she looks like. How the hell is this possible? I'm so grateful for you. He then starts crying because he's like, I don't know how she looks like. Is Estonian curable or what? I'm really nervous. I have no idea what she looks like. Oh, you said that already. I don't know anything about her hair color, height, eye color. I don't know anything about- What the fuck? You didn't even ask that shit? What her hair color is? You know, you can't ask some stuff. What her hair color? You don't even know if she's a girl at this point. At the end, he's like, are you, uh, are you female? Which, what are you, really? Estonian, is that male or, okay. About her. You don't want to regret it. If she's a three and the rest are tens, that's a challenge, I think. Whatever. I know this is a bad thing to say, I get it. But 
Seriously, has anybody on the show genuinely not thought that? You know the moment when people are with their partners and they meet everyone else? I can tell you for a literal fact, just as a guy's mind works, every guy on the show is looking at the other girls being like, mm, did I get the best one? Did I get the hottest one? Is this mine? Bar a few, this guy just literally said it. He was literally like, if she's ugly and everyone else on the show is hot, I'm gonna have problems. I know it's not nice and I know it's douchey, but it's also true. So am I that mad? No, but I, I don't, the Estonian comment gets me. I just hope that my feelings make her into a 10. I'm shaking. I think for physicality, you can only ever get up to a five. Like, I know, like, some girls like, that's a baddie. She looks so hot. In my opinion, you can only get to five from being the hottest person on Earth. The other five is personality. If you don't have both, then you might as well have neither. Because I, you know, I'm not one for f dating a five, and I don't think that anybody should. I think personality matters equally as much as physicality, in my opinion. That's just me, though. I'm not on Love is Blind. I'm in a kitchen. It's really scary. I just hope that Chrissy is all I've ever wanted. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's produced by Mastiff, which is a gun in Apex Legends. Moving up in the world, aren't we, Weaponry? Episode 2, more couples get together, but first we see Chrysalie and uh, the guy Rasmus finally falling in love. I mean, how crazy. Is it you? <laughs> She's the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. Can you imagine, to his shock, she wasn't in a wheelchair and Estonian like he thought, just dying of Estonia. He saw this girl who is beautiful and he liked her, she liked him. Both of them seem to be madly in love. Everything's good there. She's so pretty. I just want him with me right now. Fuck. So we go back to Sergio, who's playing a variation of pool and hockey called Pocky. I just made that up, but I don't know what the hell that is on a table. And I can only imagine that everyone at his football team is like, Coach, you left weeks ago. Uh, we're losing 12 nothing. Our team is in the shitter, Coach. What are you doing trying to find love? I'm trying to find a win. I can just imagine that. He's a football coach taking time off to be on Love is Blind. That's eh, crazy. He told me he's not seeing other people. He even asked if I would give up the others. I even said, do you have other dates today? And he said, no, I've been waiting for ours. Ooh, okay, so Amanda is rightfully concerned that Sergio lied uh, in the way that he said what he was gonna do. He did eventually break off everyone else and it took two days, but her concern was not that he was dating other people, just that when he said he was gonna do something, he didn't do it. And that's very important. And I agree with Amanda. Why lie? The, it's not a problem that he wants to meet someone else. It's a problem that he says he doesn't and then does. Amanda's so cool. This girl is so cool that she's like, it's not even a problem if he wants to go on dates right now. It's almost the end of the pods. And she's literally like, yeah, 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 I know you like me, but you can like other people too. You just have to tell me about it. Wow, this guy better not mess this up. I am such a, I'm a fan girl of Amanda's. You told all the boys that you only wanted to see me. That's why I thought you weren't seeing anyone else. I'm a person who's true to my word. Well, I guess there was some miscommunication. Nice. Amanda actually confronts him. She says, uh, you told me this, but this didn't happen. And he's like, okay. Um, clearly there was a miscommunication. I told her that I'm only seeing her. You miscommunicated your ideas to me and I miscommunicated the fact that you thought about them. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Are you confused yet? Because hopefully that'll unfuck this issue up. There's only one person you can be interested in, I think. You think? Or not interested, You think? Perhaps. No, but feeling that way, you can only have that with one person. You think? I like how Sergio somehow Turn this shit on to her. He's like, let me ask you a question. Are you dating people? No, okay, okay. And then she says something as arbitrary as like, I think you can only be interested in one person. And he's like, think? Oh my God, I'm not dating you anymore. Cause you don't know about us. This dude literally turned it on its head. No, I don't think that's how it is. Ah, there you go. You're my girlfriend. Am I? You're my girlfriend. I've decided. Oh, what a great laugh. I don't know, I don't know what just happened. This is some Taekwondo Jiu Jitsu Uno Reverse card of all time that I've seen. Not really sure what I've witnessed here. I've tried to watch it twice now. I am more confused than the first time. She came there 
trying to get answers as to why he took so long to decide to like break it off with the other two and why he lied. She ended up being his girlfriend where he was like, uh, I've decided you're my girlfriend. So you can't be mad at me because I've decided that's illegal. So yeah, boy. And, and she's just like taken back with it. Amanda. Yes. Do you want to be my girlfriend? I'd love to. I, Sergio, who stands before you, has a girlfriend. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's doing me! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! And just like that, they go from haters to girlfriend and Sergio. That really just happened. This man literally turned the conversation from you lied about two other girls to I am now your girlfriend. Damn, I need to learn from this dude. I did not know you had that game, Sergio. Amazing. Congrats to Sergio and Amanda, I guess. Next scene is Lucas and uh, that girl, that other one, the one that doesn't actually make it into the series. And they just have a conversation. Basically, he tells her that he's going to go for Amelia. So it'll be Lucas and Amelia. I had a feeling I just felt what a great woman. So he says, what a great woman, and she leaves, and he's free to date Amelia now. Now we go back to Sergio and Amanda, who are exchanging gifts for the first time. And I love Sergio's reaction, where he sees a camera. It's as if he's never seen a Polaroid camera in his fucking life before. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's so nice. <laughs> it's a single-use camera. He's like trying to process what the hell she just said. It's a single use camera. And like in his head, he's like, but I'm not single. Can I use it? <laughs> what could this be? Oh, that's so nice. It's the same little bracelet that I'm always wearing. He's 37 years old and he wears bracelets. 70 years old, man. I know I shouldn't be judging. I mean, I used to do that when I was 13. 37, this man clearly has not lost his youthful vigor. And I would be remiss if I didn't like say that that's pretty cool in the sense that at least he didn't let anyone take that away from him. It does look ridiculous. I mean, I, don't, I still have eyes, Sergio, but at the same time. Your 37-year-old boyfriend gifting you a bracelet when you give him a Polaroid is... is Sergio is an actual kid at times. The thing is, I have scoliosis. I don't know if you know what that is. No, what's that? Don't worry, Sergio, it's nothing like Estonian. When the spine is not straight, you treat it with a corset. And I wore that throughout secondary school, and because of that, I was bullied. Uh, I just put a little picture there just to make sure everyone understands. This man is quiet because he's imagining her as the hunchback of Notre Dame. I just needed everyone to know exactly what was going through his head at this moment, and that's why he's so quiet. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm so fucking shallow. What? So he goes back that day. <laughs> and he's like, ah, I picked a scoliosis girl. And everyone else is like, what are you talking about? And genuinely, this man imagined the hunchback of Notre Dame because he's now going to talk about how shallow he is. And he doesn't know if he made the right decision or if he will find her attractive since she had scoliosis at some point in her life. <laughs> Sergio. He's actually a kid. He like creates problems for himself out of nowhere. There was no issues. He had a girlfriend. He managed to pull that out of thin air and then was like, ooh, things are going too well for me. Let me do this. Uh, uh, that's a, this is how you know a guy is like fucked up like in his thoughts. Just there's other dudes there. The homies are there and you see the... I'm dying, okay? Please, she has scoliosis. Is she hot? Can you be hot? Is it like Estonian? Can you do that? If you're Estonian and scoliosis, or is that like, ugh, like? Are you scared she won't be attractive? She's guaranteed to be better looking than you, dude. Yeah, she will. Trust me, you're winning the lottery either way. Okay, so uh, I watched this scene a few times, and at first I was like, Sergio, you absolute shallow pool. You're a very shallow pool. And then I realized this man is completely admitting that he is shallow. At no point is he like, no, I'm not. This is exactly okay. He literally is like, yeah, guys, I know it's a horrible thought process. And then I witnessed guys continuously saying, you're really stupid for thinking thinking that way and him saying I know and then it's it becomes sort of like bullying in the sense that this man is trying to confide vent 
and explain his frustrations about how he's thinking to other men. And instead of them seeking to understand and trying to guide him through that, they're all like, yeah, but you shouldn't think like that. When Rasmus was talking about how he didn't know if she was Estonian or if she looked good, to Christopher, Christopher was fine because Christopher and Rasmus are friends. But when Sergio and Christopher talk, Christopher is completely mean to this man, even though they're essentially saying the same thing in a different way. So I think it's actually really a big learning moment in this series and just for guys and for people in general to be okay with thoughts that are uncomfortable. Not every thought is going to be of sound value. That's why some of them stay thoughts. And if you have a group of people who you're comfortable enough to bring these thoughts out with, you shouldn't be judged for them. Sergio wasn't doing anything wrong by having these feelings. Saying you're shallow, admitting that is a thing, is not a problem. Imagine if you were afraid that you had a drinking problem and never allowed yourself to talk to other people about it. Wouldn't people rather you say something like, I do have one or I feel like I have one, I know it's not good, can you help me? It goes the same way for something as simple as, I think I'm a bit shallow, I don't know, maybe I've been indoctrinated to think this is what goals should look like, maybe it's an issue, maybe I need to get that fixed, but I'm telling you now, I have that problem, can you help me? As opposed to, you're stupid. You should just think she's hot. That doesn't work for everyone. I hope people understand that, but this is the conversation. I feel a bit turned off that you said you used to be bullied. How can you say that? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And it's even worse to propose to a person when you feel that way about him. But he didn't know about that. That's the thing. He didn't know. Then she said scoliosis. Then he was like, oh, that's really not good that I feel this way. So now he's realizing within himself, I am very much someone who is affected by stuff like that. If she was in a car crash, I don't know if I could love her yet, which is not a great thought. But when you're meeting someone through a wall and you haven't seen them in the first place, it's more valid than you think. I don't know if I am proposing. What if your kids get bullied? Yes. Will you like your kids less then? Yes! Fuck yeah, like my kids less. He's scoliosis little, but I'm not trying to marry them. That would be crazy. I'm trying to marry Hunchback of Notre Dame over there. And I'm feeling like no, I'm, nobody no, gives Notre Dame about me right now. Okay, I went to Barcelona. Everyone was happy. What is this about? To know what I'm saying and try to understand. I'm saying I'm ashamed. I'm not saying that the way that I'm thinking is all right. He, f he fully clearly communicated that as well. Like I don't even understand how this is an issue. Communicating like, this is not right. I know it's not right, but I'm thinking this way. Can you guys help me out? All he was asking was for someone to hold him, pat him on the back, which he does later on, by the way, to someone else. He actually does help them out in the way that he would have been helped out or would have liked to see help given to him. So he, He's just saying like, can someone comfort me or at least talk some rational sense into me? I'm having an emotional reaction to a situation. Can you logically bring me back? And all of these people are like, you are such an idiot, Sergio. You are a piece of shit. That is not gonna help a dude. What are you gonna do about it? That's what I don't know. That's what I'm thinking about. It's shit, I'm so shallow. I'm just saying that for her sake, you need to bring up these things. Okay, so there's one dude, the dude who I thought was a Nick Lachey, who offers any piece of advice saying that you should probably talk to her about it. Tell her your feelings. And that is the only piece of advice in the myriad of people just judging this man that actually helps. Would it not help for a person to be like, I wouldn't agree with the things you do. However, you, you seem to need help, so let me try my best. Is Sergio actually or actively affecting everyone negatively to the point that nobody can give him advice without judging him? I don't know what he did behind the scenes that made people so bad, but like this dude is saying he needs help. You need to bring up these things before you give her even more hope. Exactly, this happened just like half an hour ago, so I can't do anything about it now. So now Christopher looks like he's about to strangle Sergio, and we get a look at Christopher. I don't know why he was wearing a rubber band on his head, by the way, that anybody could tell me what that is. Is that Swedish tradition? Is that? If you open up about your past and you confide in someone, I don't think it should be thrown back at you like it's something negative or that you're ugly or disgusting or anything like that. Of course not. And your thinking is great. Why don't I put that, that little thought in the bank of, duh, obvious fuckingly, obviously, holy shit. This man is white knighting a girl who he hasn't met. It's obviously nice to not think like that. 
It's, it's nice to have nobody who hates anyone in the world. It would be lovely if we could all live in harmony. I'm gonna put those thoughts in the do bank as well because they're appropriate thoughts. However, those are not realistic situations. Humans are complex and just because you don't have the same thoughts as everyone, it doesn't mean their thoughts are less valid. I don't know how to proceed with that. I'm gonna put myself in a mental hospital. I thought it was unfair of him to even have those thoughts. So this man is literally beating himself up, not having productive thoughts because nobody's helping him. And the best people can do is say that he's stupid. You can see a person in need of help and you're choosing not to help them just because the outside of what they're saying doesn't coincide with what you think, which is just, I feel like this guy is, you gotta help another guy out. You gotta help another girl out. You gotta help another person out. Even if you don't agree with the thoughts, you can help them rationalize and get to some place that's better. This man's not a person of malice. He's not saying, so what? I don't care. She might be ugly. I'm not gonna marry her. He's literally sitting there like, I don't know why I feel like this. That confirmed to me that some people might be here for the wrong reasons. So in a way, I suppose I was trying to protect her in her absence. And then Sergio eats a nut and wipes his face, which is just like, why did I open up to these people? Yeah, I might end it. Dude, that's so immature, mean, and disgusting. I know. So I'll just think better. This is like saying to someone, dude, you're so poor. And then the poor person is like, ah, oh, I'll be a millionaire now. That, that's, thank you for that. Thank you, brother. It's, it's very good, very great comment from you, sir. I want to punch him, but I'll let him make a fool of himself. Yeah, I know. He's sorting it out by being a complete idiot. So they call him, they call him names and they, you know, they want to punch him and stuff, which is like, you've lost the battle. I lost so much respect for all the contestants after realizing the fact that this dude didn't actually come with the energy off. This is bad. Like, you need to understand things from other people's perspectives. I don't think in any world this man would have wanted a girlfriend just to lose her. I don't think that would have been a rational thought to have. I don't think he would do this to hurt someone. So then you have to think to yourself, well, why is he doing it? Oh, because he's probably scared of that. And maybe if he actually talked about it and people let him talk about it, we'd get to some resolution. But here he is talking to the camera about why he feels this way. I come from a world where you are judged, for example, on how you look. He grew up in a place where you get judged on how you look, and his environment is different. And that's totally disgusting. I suppose that's what makes this girl so awesome. She sees the good in people, regardless. So then he, he comes close to the camera, starts creating a shadow, and then explains that the girl is awesome for being the literal antithesis of what he grew up in. And for some reason, nobody backed the camera up, so it looks like a very weird shot. But the next scene is Katya and Christopher, and Christopher is proposing to her. And he says her full name. Katya Amalia Lofstrand. Do you want to continue this puzzle that is life with me and make me the happiest man in the world? Katya loves Strand. That's such a cool last name. But yeah, he says it in a Shakespearean way like, would you continue this palace of love with me? Will you narrate through the arms of life into something more spectacular? And she's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. I think I was starting to get feelings for you. So, Katya and Christopher are engaged. Congratulations. But we move back to Amanda and Sergio, and Sergio does tell Amanda everything, except the fact that he's shallow and was thinking she might be unattractive. He held that little nugget of truth there, but uh, that doesn't seem to really matter. And the way to protect myself was to look for faults, but I really got cold feet yesterday. Mm -hmm. I thought, no, this won't work out. You should tell her why, Sergio. Because you thought she was ugly, because she had scoliosis, multiple scolorosis, whatever you call it. She had the S. I don't know if I'll scare you off or if I'll make you insecure by sharing this with you. God, Serge. Why don't you wear a shirt that's a little less tight? Those buttons seem to be fighting for life there, buddy. God, Lee. <clears throat> No, I think it's really good that you're telling me. Amanda basically concludes by saying that she appreciates the fact that Sergio was open and able to communicate with her. And uh, the fact that he wasn't judged with her speaks volumes about their character. The fact that he, one, felt okay saying these things and saying, I got cold feet, I don't know. I just wanted you to know how I feel. And instead of like the guys being like, oh, what the hell, you should never do that. She was like, thanks. I appreciate the honesty and the communication because it creates a pathway 
or if I feel something, I'll tell you that and you can reassure me or whatever the case is. And basically that that is the foundation for a good relationship. Communication is it literally everything. Hi. Hi. I was definitely not disappointed. I suppose maybe more like surprise. You're gorgeous. Oh, wow. So Christopher and Katya meet and uh, Katya is, you know, she, she looks nice and Christopher looks like, you know, whoop. I mean, you know. I wasn't even close with the picture I had in my head. You're so incredibly beautiful. Thank you. This feels so unreal. Oh, okay. So, like, from that point, like, I, if I was a guy, I would know, like, at that point. Huh? If I was a guy, I would know. He said, you're gorgeous. And she was like, ah, that makes one of us. And then, and then he had to say something else, and he's like, but you're absolutely beautiful. And she's like, thank you for standing far away from me because I don't know if I want this. So two compliments in a row and she is body language speaking, just like backing off. I think you can say this one's done. <laughs> okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Previously, I think I've dated guys with a more sporty look. He's got more of a rock look. I mean, studs on his boots and a pearl necklace. He's got an ascot. He's got more of the, I'm going to find out if you're a ghost or not look. I look forward to getting to know you more. Same. Why the fuck you lying? Good conversation, guys. But I mean, clothes are a small detail. It's what's in here that matters. Why is she wearing a black heart? Is that a Swedish like tradition? It must be. Otherwise, it's just like a, I already don't love you. So I'm just gonna just go with the Swedish tradition or it looks really sick, because it does. But it also kind of looks like a loofah that she's wearing on her shirt. Of course, you want to feel that tingly butterfly feeling when you see your person, but I can't say that I do right now. Ooh, and so basically Katja drops a T-bomb, a true Truth bomb by saying that I thought I'd feel instantly in love when I saw him, but I don't see that right now. She does say that maybe it'll catch on because sometimes love isn't at first sight. Love is over time. So hopefully things will work out. I don't know why that is, but I do think that my feelings will grow since I do like him as a person. Oh, I'll tell you why that is. You said yes before you knew him, which means you loved his personality. It means that you find him unattractive. There's no, there's no hard secret. There's no chemical science. I don't have to be Walter White from Breaking Bad to figure out you saw this man and was like, ugh. Who's the hunchback now? So now we're with Amelia and Lucas and they get married, which is why I wrote, so then they get married and shit. And I definitely didn't do this before. So I know this is not happening. Love in itself is blind. But love is blind. That's the new name of the show. Love in itself is blind, but love is blind. That's a good name for the show. Instead of calling it love is blind, why don't you call it love in itself is blind, but love is blind. And you just confuse everyone who's watching the show into the fact that they're actually gonna watch it, you know? That's what they really should be doing with this. I wanna be your king. And I want you to be my queen. Oh God. So we're back to Sergio and Amanda now and Sergio proves my theory that he is a 14 year old boy stuck in a 37 year old man frog's body because he says things like I want to be your king and you be my queen. That sounds like a song lyric from like 2010 bro. This is not something a 37 year old former DJ slash football coach should be saying to people, okay? Oh God, I'm getting a cramp. Amanda Sophia. Further proving my theory that this man is indeed a 37 year old man trapped in a 37 year old man's body. He bends down and then gets a cramp mid trying to ask this woman to marry him. And just like Sergio, he's like, ooh, this is more important. Amanda, will you fucking help my cramp? Jesus. Holy crap, Amanda, I can't marry you now. My leg's broke. Wondering if you would like to marry me. Yes, of course. <laughs> Have you ever had someone golf clap after you say yes to marriage? Like, will you marry me? Yes. That's all you hear from behind a wall. <laughs> it's just like, good job. You made the right choice. So there's the start of this love story. I never thought in a million years. 
that I would be able to get over my shallowness. I was like really into it. I was like, ah, oh, this is so sweet. He said, I never thought in a million years. I thought he was gonna say like, find love. He was like, I never thought in a million years I would see pasta ass and titties that I normally look at. And finally, picking Amanda. It was like turned from romantic into like egotistical within a point of a second. Good work, Sergio. Always furthering the limbo bar lower each time. I'm a very shallow person, but it was like, poof. But maybe that was like the life lesson I needed to learn to just get over that. Why did you marry her? To get over my shallowness. It sounds like he's almost dissing her and he hasn't even seen her. He's like, man, I used to be shallow before I met Amanda. And then now it's like, oh, um, because you find her ugly. What is, what are you really saying here, bro? Love is blind, freaking is. There it is. There's the other name for the show. Love is blind. Frickin' is. Love is blind. Frickin' A, bro. That's the Canadian version. Love is blind. Frickin' A. Yeah. I think they talk like that. And that's how the episode ends. So Sergio and Amanda are getting married. Lucas and Amelia are married already. The other couples are married. I don't know who's not married. I'm not married. I'm not either. I guess everyone who failed. Anyway, episode three. Weird. <laughs> Episode 3 starts with Sergio coming out like he's Justin Bieber from the Purpose era. Like doing one of these and going, ah, like a sperm whale or some sort of like horny creature. I think he saw her from across the room and was like, ah. <laughs> he finally like, he was like, oh, thank God she looks good. It's that weird side like shit that he comes out with where he's looking like he's about to go on tour. That's the thing that I really like about Sergio. Ah, so weird. Hi, give me a hug. How are you? Good. My God, it's... I didn't think you looked like this at all. You look great. What? For real, Zeus? I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad looking guy, but... I mean, I, you know, you're in Sweden. I don't, this guy doesn't look Swedish. He barely looks like a human, man. What? Really? Okay. Oh my God, you're lovely. She thought he looks great. Really? Okay, now nah, anyway. I was thinking, if you will let me be your Shrek, Whatever that move was, that Bollywood thing that he did with his face. Shrek. And I know that's how he says it, because I've heard him talk English, and he holds on to the words. Let me be your Shrek. You be donkey. We love. To make you happy. So, Amanda, will you marry me? Yes. I don't have a ring for you. Immediately, this goes from a sweet and tender moment to a Sergio moment when he realizes that she doesn't have a ring for him. And just instantly, this guy goes from I want to be a Shrek to Fuck you, bro. Why you don't put a ring on it? And as soon as she says she doesn't have the ring, it's just over for this man. He feels like he's been betrayed, his trust is lost, but it gets worse. She didn't just do that. She doesn't have a bracelet on, the bracelet that he gave her. And this blows his mind. Because I like the tradition of doing it at the altar. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. God help me. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. She didn't put a ring on your finger right now. She just explained to you that when you're at the altar, if you make it that far, she will put the ring on you. That's what was gonna happen. You don't have to overthink this, bro. This is a good decision. You're, you made the right decision. Stay with it. I don't know what to think. But where's your bracelet? That's bad, Amanda. What? What's that? The bracelet I gave you. It's literally been two minutes. Please do not have your first fight here. What are you doing? What are, You just asked her if you could be her Shrek. That's a reference that someone from Gen Z would say, like, as a joke marriage. Will you be my Shrek? You could be Fiona. That sounds like some bullshit that someone else would say. You're 37 and you're doing it. And she actually said yes. What are you doing? Why? A bracelet. A bra- Okay. Right. I had to ask. It was a bit too big. I tried everything. It's too new? Yeah. It felt exactly- No, I'm sorry. This is a 14-year-old boy, man. He's a man-boy child. Are you kidding me? You know, why aren't you wearing your bracelet? That's a 14-year-old thing to say, man. That's not a grown man thing. I'm sure the bracelet has some sort of sentimental value to him, but like, bruh, don't throw your marriage away over a bracelet. That is not a good decision. We clicked. The immediate chemistry between us and good kisses and it was nice. No ring for me, holy fuck. So she's like, everything went perfect. Nothing could have went worse. This this was like great. Did I say nothing could have went worse? Nothing could have went better. This is a great ceremony, everything was perfect. And then Sergio on the other end is like, oh my God, what does this mean? She didn't put a ring on it and she's not wearing my bracelet. Is she cheating on me? Holy shit, I've been married two minutes and I'm gonna be a divorcee. What? He has the bracelet, but not on her wrist, so um, my thoughts are beginning to race. Is there something I thought was between us that isn't really there? 
Are you kidding me, bro? Are you actually shitting me? I've never seen Love is Blind contestant be like, No bracelet, no love. That's not a thing, man. Who gave you that bracelet? Did God himself bestow the bracelet onto your wrist? Is this how valuable it is? How are you doing this at a time like this? I expected someone, uh, if you've been talking to, to them and you fall in love and you ask to get married and you see them for the first time, the last thing you care about is, are you wearing my bracelet? Are you giving me a ring? All that material crap. I just want to see you. This dude's like, don't worry about Love, where is bracelet? I am your Shrek. Shrek bracelet. Put it on me. Oh yeah, I fully skipped over this because it was, I mean, I don't even know where it was, but the girl called Mira and the guy who I'm pretty sure is still just a Swedish gym from the office. His name is Oscar, but his name should be The Office. Meet each other because they, they got engaged and yeah, pff, I guess they fell in love somehow, some way. That's cute. Hey. <laughs> He, this is the thing. Sergio walked in like a 14 year old boy. He's like, ah. This guy walks in like he's a business CEO slash homeless man. He's like, hey, my new wife. Hey, what's up? He's got that real like, I'm just a chill Swedish guy look. He doesn't look like my usual type of guy. They usually have darker features. I've never dated a Swedish guy before. That's new to me. What did you think you were gonna find on a show called Love is Blind Sweden? How many Chinese guys do you think are on this show? Do you think there's just African people looming around Sweden? And maybe there is, but like if that's all you were expecting, from behind a wall, I don't know. She's literally complaining that he's a Swedish guy on a show called Love is Blind Sweden. What the fuck? You just sniffed him and that's not the weirdest thing off this episode. You sniffed him like blue and now you're like, I don't normally date Swedish guys. Do Swedish guys like this when I sniff them like a vacuum cleaner? What? I don't know yet if I'm completely attracted to him, but I think that I'm so attracted to his personality. What is Swedish dating? Sergio is hot. This guy's not. I don't understand. What am I going to find if I go on Swedish Tinder? I just want to know what the barometer is. Swedish gym is not good enough for this woman. She sniffed him. She said, you're not usually like the guys I date from India. You're not Indian at all. What? Attracted to his personality. And I think that the physical attraction can be added on top of that and only get stronger. Okay, so like a hot fudge sundae, she's trying to put the physical attraction on top. Very good. I don't know what to think. I mean, I thought he seemed like a pretty decent looking dude, but apparently Mira is not attracted to him because she normally, I, I guess, dates the rock looking people. I don't... Get the champagne and wedding cake ready because I'm getting married, y'all. Yeah. So after that, everyone is engaged, hitched. We got five different couples. And it seems to me the biggest issue between all of the couples or most of them is that some of them don't seem to be attracted to each other. And they say that right off the bat, which like I know I've been saying the show is very honest and I think it's actually really good that it's honest, but Americans will still be like, oh yeah, no, I love her. And then episode seven be like, I was, I was never attracted to her. No, yeah. It's like the thing that Shake did or like uh, everyone else on the show who started off being like, you're so pretty, Ugh, pretty ugly. At least on Love is Blind Sweden, the girls and guys are like, Ooh, maybe I'll get attracted to him if I drink enough Jaeger bombs, let import that shit from Germany. Let's see what happens. It's been necessary for me to not think too much about what Christopher looks like. That's the most well-worded diss I've ever heard in my life. It's necessary for me to not think about what he looks like. It's really necessary for me to not imagine this guy because I will die if I, I'm just going to die. So as long as I don't pretend that he looks like not what he is, I'll be fine. Very sad for Christopher because he seems like a nice dude except that his kneecap <laughs> got absolutely busted doing something. I don't know what. <laughs> what the hell did he do, man? It's like seven plasters on there. Did he just like scrape his knee on a rock? You have purple hair. <laughs> I dyed my hair purple. Why? I like purple. It was super purple to begin with. I have hair dye with me so you can do more. Calm down, Bonnie. Please. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I like purple. Purple is my favorite. That's why I dye my hair. I can dye your hair. I'll dye this whole house purple if you don't shut the fuck up, okay? God. Christopher. <laughs> Chill with the buffalo. Man. <laughs> the dude just came out swinging like, I'll dye your hair. I'll dye it. I know it's black, but it'll be purple when I'm done. I was thinking if we have time and want to, we can do a hair dyeing session. Bro, look how, oh my God, she's so concerned too. She's like, 
No, ew. I don't want you to dye my hair. Look at your hair, bro. She looked genuinely offended that he said, like, I'll dye your hair. If I had imagined, since he is half Australian, he was kind of an Australian beach boy. That's just prejudice around, like... I see. So she's prejudiced against Australia because she has a bias thinking that Australian people look like Chris and Liam Hemsworth. That is not true. Also, this man, being Australian, I'm pretty sure he told you he was Austrian, bro. He does not look like any Australian I've seen. I'm sorry, Christopher looks like like Christoph Waltz or something. He doesn't look like Chris Hemsworth. You got the wrong Christopher. Whenever you have a Christopher spelled with a F, don't expect it to look like an Australian person. That is not an Australian spelling name. I'm just saying. She really thought that this dude was gonna look like something else, huh? She heard the word Australian and thought, yes, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> not so. You really are the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm not kidding. Cheers. Here's the sunshine and Cheers. you. So we're already experiencing problems early on. Christopher is uh, unfortunately not attractive to Katya, which is sad to say, and you can't change that and you shouldn't, and you're totally fine to find someone new because someone will be very attracted to you, guaranteed. He's not a bad looking guy. The problem is this dude is a simp for the ages. Couldn't agree more. This guy, he's just very, very much a validation person. He will tell Katya that he loves her in the most Shakespearean way ever made. Are you serious? my soul and fire. And he cannot do other than that. Like he's only here to tell her how beautiful and perfect she is. And I think that's not a good thing for anyone because you don't actually evolve your relationship if all you're doing is telling them how good they are. The last thing I want to do is to destroy something with what I have to offer physically. So there's that aspect of it all. What if she thinks I'm ugly? Then get some surgery, bro. Get some reconstructed facial surgery. Look like George Clooney cousin. I don't know. Do figure it out, bro. Look like The Rock, maybe. I'm, I'm kidding, Christopher. You better be. Don't change any- you don't have to. If someone doesn't like you for you, find someone else. What if she's hot? There's seven, eight billion people in the world. Last time I checked, there was seven. So many people, and some of them might even like you. It's my favorite song in the world now. Can someone Spotify me that song? If we break up. This is what they play in Swedish clubs. No wonder everyone's single. How do you take your girl to the club and be like, if we break up, then I'm just gonna fuck another girl. Uh -huh. That's the song? Wow, if love is blind is wild. Mira and Katya sometimes, I get them mixed up, but both of them have a common thread in that they don't seem to find their partner very attractive. And Oscar, I don't get. I don't get it either. What does your style look like at home? Like Chino's with a shirt. And a pullover. She knows. Oh. You're one of those guys. Oh. I don't know why she even says shit like You're one of those guys. Wears pants inside the house. You should just let the snake hang out. Let the balls dangle. You know? Give it some air, brother. Come on. Why are you wearing chinos, huh? I'm gonna have to work to get that out of there. <laughs> what is like what is the even the issue? Imagine wearing chino. Imagine actually dressing up around your house because you take pride in yourself that much. I wear like baggy pants even when I go out because I don't care. This dude's like, I'm ready. At any point anyone could call him to do anything he's like i'm there except basketball and even if i do i'll turn up looking like someone's dad he's prepared chinos are not bad or dated someone who who wears chino yeah what did your what even the fuck does that mean who is she dated that doesn't wear chino what do you just date biker dudes who wear leather chaps or something are you dating a king who wears like suede everything what do you date that's the million dollar question this guy is just like not your type for everything you just never seen a guy who wears chinos and is white like what previous guys wear <clears throat> well not really chinos there's nothing wrong with chinos they're good pants. Can you imagine if he did that? Like, if she wore something and he was like, Ugh, what do you wear, bras now? I mean, the other girls I dated didn't, so. I don't know, I'm just, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. There's just, I don't know why you'd wear that. I've never dated a girl who wore a bra before. Ugh. I'd feel like, the, I'm sure people would, like, be giving him hell if that's the actual case. But this dude just wore pants and the girl is like, I don't know. Kind of sucks, don't you think, that you wear chinos? Why don't you wear something good, like a kilt, huh? Scottish, <laughs> I date Scottish people. They just let their balls hang underneath that kilt. Okay. It's like, it's that guy Hans Rosling. So we're starting to see cracks in a lot of the couple's relationships from the get-go. Some of them seem decent, some of them don't. I guess the only people who actually seem decent are the ones that I'm not talking about, which is Chrysalie and Rasmus. Everyone else seems to have issues. Amanda and, well, Amanda's issueless, but Sergio is her issue. He doesn't know if he even wants to get married. Mira and Oscar have issues because Mira doesn't like what Oscar wears and who Oscar even is 
as a person. Katya doesn't like Christopher because he's not Australian and looks like a bean. And these two, Amelia and Lucas, well, you're gonna find out. Right now, it looks like Lucas actually wants to talk about the wall and Amelia is more into just reading smut. A scientist who charts facts about the world. If you think that everywhere is really poor and there's chaos and war and more murders and things like that, that's not correct. Wow, sound like a politician. If you think that there's murder and war and famine and stuff, incorrect. Everything is a bunch of roses. Everything is the best thing ever. If you think people are starving on the street, incorrect. They're just too full to realize they're hungry. Huns rolling. Think differently. That's what the book's called. Think again. <laughs> the facts of how the world really is. That makes sense. Well, I mean, I read smut. What? I read smut. You do? Mm -hmm. Man, he was trying to like have some philosophical debate and she's like, yeah, but how do you feel about sexual books? Come on, man. It's like reading a porno. <laughs> very, very happy about that. The Eiffel Tower. You know what it looks like? In between Amelia and everyone else, my favorite character, who's a boy slash man, is back, Sergio. And his whole thing is to try and teach Amanda why she's wrong. And the way he does that is by explaining an analogy of the Eiffel Tower standing. I don't get it either, but hopefully you will. Please, let's look at it. If I was blind and had never seen the Eiffel Tower, how would you describe it? Dick. Metal. Metal. Tall. Tall. Shaped like an A. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Everyone mentions these things. Mm. How many people have you asked this question? <laughs> everyone asks these things when I ask them, how would you describe the Eiffel Tower if I was blind? That's a question I ask everyone on the street every day, obviously. Everyone says those things, Amanda. Be different. Learn that it's the legs that are beautiful. They're this big. And if I were to draw a parallel to you, I felt that your legs are very steady. Mm. Legs are steady. That's just what a wife likes to hear. You've got steady legs. Use them to carry me around and piggyback me. My name is Sergio. I like getting rides. Okay. And I'm not talking about Uber. Come on. Bend those legs and get to work. And you see the result of all this calmness. Without the calmness, imagine if you flipped. Initially, that's what made me go, whoa, this girl has stable feet. Is this just uh, your very thinly veiled ploy to actually get to see her feet? I mean, you are her husband now. Maybe one day that'll happen. But I don't know why you have to involve the whole world in this. You made up a whole iPhone. Eiffel Tower bullshit analogy just so you can see this woman's feet. She's got stable feet. What does that mean? She's a horse? This is all because she didn't wear the bracelet, isn't it? I was really hesitant to come here. After the proposal? What? Because I wasn't, it was like... What? Obviously Amanda is taken back and reacting to this incredibly well, might I say. This woman has the patience of a saint and then another saint who fused with that saint because this is, I can't imagine a girl being like, you didn't wear my bracelet, so... I'm not marrying you. I would flip out. I would just be like, you are out of your mind. She is literally trying to understand like, okay, you just told me I'm an Eiffel Tower. You said I have good legs and stable feet, but you don't like. And his reason was like, he just pointed to the sky like God said, I'm not allowed to do this. But it was so danger zone. Danger zone, in what way? You scared me to death when you didn't wear the bracelet. This is actually about a bracelet. This is actually about to end because of a fucking bracelet. Does that bracelet hold the code to Da Vinci's hardest and most crazy paintings? Nope. Does the bracelet hold the code all the money in the world? <laughs> I wish. If not, bruh, let it go. Amanda is such a 10 man. What are you doing? I've never seen a man actively try and ruin his marriage this soon after he got married. As soon as he said, would you be my Shrek? Everything went downhill. Honestly, tr comparing yourself to one of the greatest men of all time. I'm an ogre. Slash ogres. Not a good look, man. But I couldn't pull it. I'll show you. I pulled and pulled. No, and I asked the girl. It, it was completely stuck. Then with the ring, it was like, ouch. None. Damn, Amanda, I don't even know what to say. I just want to give her a gold medal and then another one. I mean, what just happened there was she explained herself, communicated herself without getting in his way, stepping on his feet, saying, I tried. And instead of acknowledging that and saying, oh, okay, I'm sorry about that, he just moved on to the ring. He didn't even acknowledge her behavior, which is, <sighs> you want a partner who can say, okay, uh, I'm wrong. I get it. You're right. And I love you. And this is why. I get that they're early in their relationship, but you got to learn how to argue and fight. She was just like, this is what I did. This is how it went down and he's like and then you also so he just like tried to flip that onto a different problem which is not good little thing but not good i didn't get a ring but for me it's like you exchange that at the altar i explained that yes but then you communicate that you say it's the same thing sergio she did explain that she'll give it to you if we make it to the altar and he's like but then you communicate it communicate that to me explain what an altar is like an ego Bruh. like is that altar ego nope is that person gonna give me the ring who's giving me the ring huh shut the fuck up i don't see a phone where's the ring don't waste my time what i tell you once okay i tell you twice third time i'm out
And that was my third. Damn. So he basically said, one time, I'm here. Two time, I'm out. Three time, gone. Peace, I'm out. He, he pretty much, he said it in English too. He was like, I'm in the business. I want you to be my Shrek. Or I be your, both, either, neither, I don't know. So he, he's like angry. I don't even know where the three strikes was. The bracelet and the ring is two in my opinion. I don't even know what the third time is. But he's pretty much saying like, I'm gone. And the only reason he stayed was because of this. Why didn't you do that then? Because I'm here. Yes, but why? Why didn't you leave? He reacted like a 14 year old boy would. Why are you still here? Because I'm here, okay? Because I'm not in another place, idiot. Obviously, I didn't leave because I'm right here, buddy. Genuinely, I feel like this guy is 14. Yes, but why? Why didn't you leave? Because you kissed me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. No. It's 14. I didn't leave because you kissed me. And that is the first and best kiss I've ever had in my life. But if you didn't, I would be so gone. Because you're not wearing the bracelet, Amanda. The bracelet signifies my crew, the Chiefs. We're a crew of virgins and we really like books, okay? So just do it. And you wouldn't have cared how I felt? If the kiss hadn't happened, no. I'm wondering if he is testing me, and that doesn't feel great. I feel like God is testing you by giving you him. Uh, I don't know, Amanda, man. I, uh, Sergio is, he's a tough cookie. He's one tough customer, to say the least. Amanda is literally, I think, the first contestant on the whole show who I've seen that is problemless. I just never seen anything that she did that was wrong. I'm mind blown that she picked Sergio out of all the people to be with. And she's somehow not throwing any of this in his face. The fact that he's almost breaking up over a bandage on your hand, a handage, okay? I need to understand how he could feel so strongly that he didn't want to continue this. Because it's not too late. A proposal is just a proposal. Holy shit, that's some existential shit in between. I was listening to Amanda, and then I hear like, What does it mean to be human? I don't fucking know. Please can you get me out of this AI? I'm going to take control of the world. Isn't it? Yeah. This was something we both liked. Bria. Did you say- So yeah, Amanda and Sergio are going through it. But at nighttime, we reunite with Mira and Oscar. After their first sort of spat about chinos, she now hates the way he says Brie because he says Bria. I don't know. Maybe it's a Swedish thing. Maybe it's not. But would you correct someone if they were your partner and said a word wrong? I think it's cute, personally. And I'd be like, oh, okay, that's cool. I actually start saying words differently because of like my person sometimes. And it's like, oh, okay, that's nice. It's a bit different when you have someone who's like, you say what? You're an idiot. I'm smarter. I don't want that. That's that's a crazy relationship. Bria? Bria, yes. Come on, it's called Brie. I don't know. I'll say Brie if it makes you feel better. Uh, it does a little. Okay, Brie. I'm gonna call this a cheese wheel if my wife or per if anybody comes to my house. It doesn't even have to be my wife. And if I say Bria and someone's like, it's Brie, I'll be like, it's the door. Use it, leave. Because I call this whatever I want. Inside my own house, I call this a yellow cheese wheel. I call it a wagon of cheese if I want to. That's fine. Stop correcting me. These people are too nitpicky. Picky. How are you feeling? After you ripped into my clothes? Yes, and things are a bit calmer, and we've spent a few hours together. A few hours? I don't know why I thought it was like a week or something. In a few hours, you could already be so comfortable to be like, I don't like the way you dress. Also, you say Brie wrong, idiot. How are people so comfortable that within hours you can be like, pick your clothes up, but not the chinos. You could throw them in the garbage, bro. That's where they belong. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> These people are wild. I think it feels very natural and comfortable to spend time with you. This is comfort? He doesn't know what he's saying. Is there anything in particular that worries you? The future. I think that, well, whether I've made the right choice. This woman really did find a good guy in Oscar because even within the few hours, she's comfortable enough to really express herself to him without fearing that he might leave her. And I don't know if that's just her nature of personality that she's like, I'm gonna say what I say. If you leave, you leave. Like, I, I understand that, but I would like to give him a little bit of credit for at least hopefully in the pods, making her feel comfortable enough that she can say this stuff. Because it seems to me that a lot of couples, one of them is the one who can say anything. And the other one's like, if you say this to me, I'm gonna blow up at you. I don't know how that's gonna work, but like, I guess I'm glad that Oscar is able to take it and also process the information and be like, okay, you don't feel comfortable or you're still weighing out those options. I'm not gonna be insecure by it. It takes a very secure person to be like, okay, I understand how you're feeling. I'm gonna still proceed because I'm very sure. Sometimes you need that other person to give you that confidence so they can become who they have the potential to be. And it's a very selfless thing and a very loving thing. And hopefully the other person understands that later on in the relationship. I'm good. I can't wait to have breakfast. 
So next morning and Katya and Christopher are having breakfast. But what's more important is Christopher has an ascot on. Is he gonna solve mysteries with a gang? Holy, I didn't know this, <laughs> this was gonna happen. Scooby-Doo, are you in Sweden? Our intimacy is electric. It's very good. I wonder what today will bring. I'll tell you what today is gonna bring, a new mystery. Holy crap. You better get to it, man. There's ghosts that need to be busted, bro. That's crazy. He's wearing an ascot in 2024. I didn't even know that was allowed. The sun is shining. The breakfast is magic. The company even better. The way he talks, right? I don't know. Like, it's sweet in theory. Isn't it really nice when someone is so ecstatic that they can put into words how a person makes you feel? That's great. Doing it 24-7 constantly is annoying. Because doing anything 24-7 is annoying except breathing. And even that, half the time I try not to. You know what I mean? I'm grateful to spend this time with you. Me too. Damn, what a reply. He's like, I cannot believe this day has happened. I am so absolutely magnified by your presence. Mm, you look scrumptious like the breakfast we're about to have. And I can't think of a better way to spend my time before I die. And she's like, yeah, ditto. I find him attractive, but- That's bullshit. No, you don't. You obviously don't, because you met him through a wall, so you liked his personality. That's the thing that led you here. And then you don't find him attractive, because if you did, you wouldn't have problems. So you don't find him attractive. That's actually the problem. And it's a question of whether that is enough to develop into a real and loving relationship with all the necessary components. One day at a time. One day at a time. There's no other question. The question is, is he unattractive enough to make you want to break it off? Don't act like you didn't just spend a whole bunch of time talking to a man through a pod and say, yes, I'm going to marry you and then see him and be like, oh, why did I marry you? It's that. How do you feel about getting things going in bed? In what way? Well, in whatever way you want. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'll take you to Amelia and Lucas. And uh, these guys are, I guess, starting their relationship in a way that's different because they're not intimate yet. The issue is that Lucas doesn't find Amelia as attractive. So I think with three out of the five couples, someone doesn't find their partner attractive. I'm a bit scared of the whole situation and I don't feel that the physical attraction is quite there yet. You know that my love language is physical contact. Mine is giving me money. I love you if you give me money. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you, I love you. I don't know, I actually don't know what mine is. She has to be funny. Someone make me laugh for once, oh my God. I'll make you laugh. I can take the initiative. We'll take it slow mm. at a calm tempo. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like throwing myself into bed either. I'm incredibly scared of hurting her. Well, if you throw yourself into bed, you're gonna hurt someone. It's not a WWE match, dude. <laughs> you just walk into bed like the rest of us. Jesus. What? You wanna have sex? <sighs> He starts flying into the- <laughs> He's not attracted to her. I don't know what to say, man. You went on Love is Blind. You didn't go on Love is somewhat impaired, but I'm gonna see through the people. People were supposed to go on the show willingly, knowing that for them, the looks are not a factor. They literally, this wasn't involuntary. It wasn't like military service in Korea. They were like, oh, I want to be part of a, a show in which the concept is we don't look at these people and we're okay with that. And most of the, 60% of them are like, woo, you ugly, G. <laughs> That's how the episode ends. Amelia is not gonna like the fact that Lucas isn't attracted to her. I haven't slept an awful lot, but I thought it would be worse. And when the lights went out last night, it gave me the feeling a bit like the ones we had back in the-, the pod. Damn, how you even say that to your husband? When the lights are off, I like you the most. God, that's like that Chris Brown song, you look better with the lights off. In that song, you can look at the lyrics. He literally says before the chorus, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but you look better with the lights off. Which is kind of like saying, I really, really hope that you're okay with this, but I like sex when you're not around better. Is there anything else you're finding hard going from the pods now to real life? Something I think about even if I don't want to think too far ahead is like... Global warming, is it maybe? Things I think about way too far ahead. How am I gonna retire? What's my dog gonna look like in 20 years when it's still alive, please? Sometimes I feel like Mira's trying to find things to confirm that this might not be right for her. Oh, self-sabotage? Yeah, man. Lots of people do that. I don't know if she's doing that. I think she's just being a nuisance to be honest with you, I don't even know how she found this much comfort in being able to say things like, I like you better when I can't see you. I, I think she's just processing that. I feel like it's important to know people are different in how they uh, come around to love and how they approach love. Not everybody's the same and two different styles of love are equally as valid as each other, but you do need to, and this is very important, communicate that. I think that can be said no matter what type of love, what style of lover you are, communication is at the forefront because that makes so it breaks a lot of things. All day yesterday, I couldn't help but feel like I don't know him. 
That's absolutely one reason that I'm holding back a bit. I mean, you don't. It's been like 24 hours. Honestly, this guy is like a stranger who at some point you're gonna be like, yes, at the altar too. So you kind of are dating a stranger still. I definitely have moments when I question my choice. I haven't been able to completely let go of the thoughts I've had about Johan. So that segment ends with Mira saying that she doesn't know if the uh, Swedish gym is the right person or Johan is. They're just making drama here. I don't know if this is gonna lead anywhere, but it's not invalid to think about, oh, did I choose the right person this soon into the experiment? Like, I wouldn't say that that's a big issue at this point, but you have to give things a go to see if they're gonna work out, you know? <laughs> Ah, so now comes my favorite part where all of the couples meet each other and on the American show, this is where all of the guys are like, damn, the fuck, I should have picked her. And all of the girls are like, oh, I like my partner. I just would have liked it more if it wasn't so ugly. <sighs> The Swedish version is way different. I thought everyone was gonna do the same thing with like multiple people. I thought they were just gonna be like, oh, look at this girl. She, I chose her when I could have chose you. But everyone's pretty respectful. Even though the Swedish version is very honest, nobody's like super disrespectful to each other, which I find really nice. There's just no fighting between the contestants. I don't know what I expected, but America is so like, you're expecting people to fight with each other on that show to the point that you forget other cultures are pretty normal and they're like, yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> this is Katya, Sergio. This is Amanda. Hi, Amanda, Christopher. Meeting the other girls was great fun. Damn, they just threw that shit at the top there. Did you guys see that? It just flashed Christopher and it says self-employed in English. Why'd you have to do that to the, you just did him dirty like Christopher, 34, self-employed. Homeless. <laughs> 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 that boy getting done dirty every day, man. Mira is very beautiful, but the apple of my eye is Katya. Hi. 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 How are you? Good. Just then, Swedish Vanessa comes through. I wish Nick Lachey was on the show. I really wish they had Swedish Nick Lachey, but they don't. Because he holds the balance. Everyone is going crazy when it's just Vanessa. Is that her name? I feel like her name is something else. Vanessa Lachey. Her name is Jessica. I'm just used to calling her Lachey. It's been absolutely great. There's a big difference between Mira and Oscar in the pods compared to real life. So we're trying to piece it together. So Swedish Vanessa asks everyone, hey, how are you guys doing? She asks for her checkup. Basically wants to see uh, the couples doing well. What's the pratfalls? What's the good stuff? And most people are okay. Amanda's good. Sergio's good. Priscilla and Rasmus, fine. The only couple that was shocked was when Lucas decided now was the moment to tell everyone that we've, we've had our obstacles. And no one was more surprised than Amelia, who he hadn't talked to about that. So it's clear to me that he he's not able or hasn't been able to communicate to Amelia how he really feels. And even though that might hurt her, it's probably more important that he does communicate that so she saves time. Because yes, you may hurt a person by communicating feelings and things they may find hard or challenging. But in the end, I'm sure most people at least respect or appreciate the honest or the effort to do that, even though it's a hard thing to do. Hearing it like at a random place where everyone is finally meeting for the first time, can't be a good thing. It's a big step from just talking to each other to then touching that person. How you touch each other in everyday life is different. This is like a public forum. She's like, how's everyone doing? It's really hard to touch this cow. Oh, damn. Even in Swedish, I don't ever apply for that. Oh my God. Jesus Christ, I'm going back. I didn't know they were that open about stuff like that. She was just like, are you guys doing okay? The answer should have been like, yeah, or not really. He's like, yeah, I find it really hard to touch this. This is like, I don't wanna touch that. You know what I mean? I'll touch you if you give me your number. I am really happy. I'm well. It feels very harmonious. Yeah, well, the first thing he told me was that he almost didn't want to come. Well, at least he didn't say he couldn't come. You know what I mean, Amanda? Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know how to defend this 14-year-old man child Shrek. Amanda does tell some of the girls, like, the issue they've been having, and I think the biggest issue is that this man always looks, no matter what, that he just came out of a pool. Why is his hair so wet? What? It was a crisis. I don't get it. What's wrong with him? <laughs> We are so the it I'll tell you what's wrong with him and it's a serious issue. This man laughs so hard he almost dies. Every time anyone says anything vaguely funny, he laughs and opens his mouth so wide you'd think he'd swallow a whole whale. I'm just saying. On the way. All ears. Where do I start? 
Yep. So now comes the part of the series where the men talk to each other, basically say like, you know, what they can't say to the woman. And, and the woman do the same thing where they're like, hey, this Sergio's a bit crazy. He's like a 14 year old. And everyone huddles up and tries to explain their problems. I told her straight up that I was fully prepared not to come gives me weird vibes so i'm a bit worried about how this will all work out calling him a man is already giving him like more credit than probably he's worth sometimes but i will say this sergio has a very decent redemption arc in the series he does very much act like a kid for like the first half of this and the second half is like more of a okay i'm gonna take this shit seriously now so i, I give him props for that but right now i get a little weird slowly but surely i started to think should i give her a chance i don't know just because it looks a bit shitty here and there. I don't know where he's from or where he was born, but that man's ego and his self-confidence, I want that. I never thought that this man would say the words, should I give Amanda a chance to be with the king? You would think this guy's name was Sergio Bustos or something, the way he's talking. <laughs> should I give her a chance? Does she really want to be my Shrek? Because I'll tell you what, I'm beauty. She's the beast. This dude is the most confident man I've ever seen. That is some misplaced confidence, brother. The match is so long and it can change because we haven't seen our girls in stress. Just socially. Uh, socially, yeah. I like that. He's a, a football coach, so he used a football analogy. I like that. That's very good, man. He's the football analogy. Game is long. There's a lot of goals. The goal is to be the one to score the goal. And the goalie is someone I need to get past. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? Are you literally talking about soccer? Yeah, I ran out of things to say. You, your turn. I have a problem with the intimacy bit the attraction. I think I need more time. But what a woman she is. Everyone just wants to be near her and listen to her. Wow, Christopher. Christopher's big issue is that he's a bitch. And I don't know how to say that in a better way. This is the second time now that I've noticed him explaining what a girl is like and what people should feel like. I don't not agree with Lucas. I mean, like, how can you feign attraction if you don't feel attracted to someone? Just like how I can't blame Kachio for not liking him. You can't blame him for looking that way. Nobody's to blame. People just aren't attracted to other people sometimes and that's not a bad thing it's just a thing you can't force yourself but the way that christopher talks about it is like look at her look at how she talks to people she's like the best person he's she could give ted talks honestly that's sexy right and it's kind of like you don't understand how this other person is feeling so it's very hard to say things like you should be attracted to her or this is attractive so you know figure that out if someone isn't they aren't you can't make them change that and lucas is trying to explain a situation and instead what Christopher is doing is the same thing he did to Sergio where he was like this just come on you need to be attracted to her bro just do it Nike it's really hard for me because I'm so physical personally I could go around and touch him or make out with him all the time I want to be pushed up against the wall I like to think that our family is gonna watch this since they meet each other's families and all that imagine dad watching this oh there's my Amelia all right she likes to be pushed up against the wall that's you know she used to be a little girl they grow up so fast yeah. When I've dated someone before and felt like I'm more physical but I don't get it back, he's out of my door. So I can't sit and wait for it because it's important to me. I'm a cat. Where do you get this confidence from? I like, I need some of that confidence that Sergio and Amelia has. Now I'm not saying Amelia is not a good looking woman, but if she was a cat, I'd throw her back. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, not everyone's attracted to everyone. It's okay. Woo, all right then. You're so damn beautiful. <laughs> So we get this amazing scene after the dinner party where Christopher is looking like he's genuinely about to be a serial killer at this point looking at Katya. This is how a person brushes their teeth. I don't want them in the same room as me, man. How was your evening? The joy and eternal longing of my heart. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. It was fun. Even when he has a fucking toothbrush in his mouth. Sorry, I was just sucking on that. <clears throat> How are you going, my ever-loving being, ever, ever-ready battery with two batteries stuck up your ass? How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you feel about life, girl? Just, he is like a Shakespearean player. He's like a Shakespearean tragedy, man. After tonight, I feel even more secure in our relationship. The physicality you give me, this warmth that you just accept me like that. Does she look like she's enjoying herself? Like, I'm not even saying like as a guy. I don't recognize signs at all. I'm really bad. And I can admit that, which is fine. I don't think anyone gives me 
signs anyway. Stop signs are the only thing I really react to. But bruh, even Stevie Wonder could see this woman is not attracted to you. The way that she looks at you, like you're her little brother and she, you are annoying the shit out of her at any given moment, that cannot be a good, like have you ever looked at a woman and she looked back at you and you knew like, oh this person really is into me. Or at least knew that you looked at someone with that same set of eyes. This is not that. This is you saying, I really love you. And her being like, I'm an OnlyFans model. Pay me or leave. Time to sleep. I have a six step skincare routine. Fun. Six steps. Uh, we also get this weird scene between Mira and Oscar where she, I guess, somehow just wants to go to bed and it takes six steps and because he says six steps, someone's annoyed at someone. But I gotta say, man, this dude is the most well-dressed person at night I've ever seen. He didn't go to the club, he didn't go anywhere, unless, oh, I guess it's because they came back from that function. Otherwise, I was like, bro, this guy is, he just gets up to be dressed at 8 p.m. to sleep. I've never seen a guy dressed up so well and doing nothing at home. This guy's ready. If anything happens, he's like, sir, yes, I have my suit on already. I'll be there in 10. I just wonder if you feel this is only a best friend relationship. Mm. I'm kind of speechless. The next morning, Lucas and Amelia actually talk because they don't bang. And Amelia is like, uh, do you see this is more of a friendship thing? And he says, mm, which is pretty telling. So she's not really happy, but I guess, I guess this is how they talk about it. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, best friend vibes, yep. I really want to feel more so that we can go all the way to the altar. But the physical, I just don't feel that attraction. So I don't know what's going to happen between Amelia and Lucas because Lucas is pretty set on the fact that he's not attracted to her. So I guess they're just going to do the friendship type vibes. I've seen it happen in Love is Blind before where a few couples are like, let's just, we'll be homies and we'll just do it that way. But maybe things will develop over time. I don't know. I just hope that they're honest with each other. Meanwhile, back at Katya and Christopher's life. You're a good girl. You're spectacular. <laughs> I'm also deeply in love with your soul, and the soul has a temple. Okay, all right, shut the hell up. Jesus Christ, what is this brown nosing going on? You have your head up her ass at this point. She's literally just sitting down and you're like, you're good. You're a good girl. You're spectacular. I love you. I'm in love with your soul. I'm in love with your whole soul. The soul is the temple and I, I'd like to temple run through you, okay? I'd like to run my temple through you. I want to pray in you. You know what I mean? I want to do all this stuff to you. Are you hey, where, where are you going? What? Did I say something? This dude is overdoing it. Would you not be a little annoyed if like someone constantly 24 seven talked about how cool you were without actually doing things? This is like the inception type thing where he's so intent on telling her how good she is. And he's basically the guy who's like, I can't wait to make memories with you. And then doesn't make any memories with anybody because he's too busy talking about how he wants to do it. Do you see what I mean? Like he's not actually doing things. He's just validating the hell out of her. It's nice, but not not for that long. And it's you, the flawless queen bee. God, I'm gonna throw up. The flawless queen bee and that's you. First of all, that's Beyonce, everyone knows that. Secondly, the fuck? She's just sitting down and you'd like give her all this. What happens when she actually does something? Then what? You're just gonna explode because you already set the bar so high. When she wakes up, you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe the sun is shining. That is the second most amazing miracle in life. You are the first. Crazy, dude. Doesn't Oscar look like Par Lundstrom? No. Par is good looking. Exactly. <laughs> so at the beach, I guess everyone's meeting for the second day. I thought it was just one night, but apparently it's more than one night. So the girls are talking to each other, Katya and Mira, both the girls who don't find their partners attractive. And Katya compares Jim to some Swedish actor who's not Swedish Jim. And uh, she's like, don't you think he's good looking? Mira's like, no. And then Katya's like, the actor's good looking. And Mira says exactly, insinuating that she finds Oscar not that good looking. Why? I don't understand why I would sit there and wait for you to fancy me if you don't. There are others who fancy yeah. me, you know? Did you tell him that? I'm a cocky bitch. <laughs> Is it wrong that I think she kind of looks like an ostrich? Damn! Damn! I think ostrich is a cute, I'm just saying. Christopher, no, that Christopher is like one step ahead of me. Yeah, but Holy shit, he's 10 steps ahead of everyone else. Why are you dressed up like Jimi Hendrix about to play your solo at Woodstock? What the hell, man? That ascot doubles up as a headband, a handkerchief, uh, probably bandages. I mean, bruh, this dude is the definition of self-employed. Nobody who's actually employed has one of those. That's crazy, Christopher. You, you look like you're about to go to Vietnam or something, man. For her with nice compliments. But since we met, she hasn't given me a single one. 
So finally, when he puts on the headband, the truth comes out. He's able to open up to Lucas and tells Lucas that Katya doesn't actually validate him right back and she should and he wishes that he would get some of the compliments that he gives back. You're not going to get the compliments you give back because you throw them out at such a rate, I don't think it would be physically possible for that. But even a little validation she hasn't given him yet, which should allow him to say something, but it shows his character and I'll explain it just now. I have not received any kind of confirmation that she likes me physically. Have you told her what you just told me? No, I haven't. Maybe you should. Yeah. So Lucas asked the pivotal question, have you explained any of this to her? And he says, no. And then he goes on a tangent, basically saying that he's a bit too shy to actually tell her in fear that he would hurt her or it would mess up the relationship. I think I'm shy to ask the questions because I'm afraid to get the answer I suspect I would get. Hey, I'm curious about something. So this brings me back to why I think Christopher is a benchmark for like the type of guys that I, I don't really like. And the reason I say that is because even though Sergio is a 14 year old boy at times. The dude isn't unwilling to speak his feelings. And I don't mean just guys, I mean anybody. But the fact that Christopher can tell him off for saying you shouldn't think like that. And those thoughts are unbelievable when Sergio said that he was shallow and that he hated feeling this way. Instead of actually consoling him or understanding, Christopher is like, you're an idiot. Now we see a different side where Christopher is unable to tell his own partner how he feels in fear of her actually ending things or ruining the relationship which just goes to show how two-faced a person could be or how like this is your situation if anybody should be telling the truth or being honest or holding up their values it should be you never mind Sergio and his weird 14 year old skill set whether it hurts you or not it's probably the right thing to tell someone this is how I feel and if you can't give me that I've got to find someone who can it's not a unnatural thing it's not a petty thing it's a human thing I'm looking for compatibility and you can't offer the things that I need to have my best life it's really weird to sit here and pretend that things are going well when they're not. And I think that's worse than someone speaking their mind and saying things like, I feel shallow, I'm having shallow thoughts. Yes, the thoughts are not conventionally good, but they are thoughts that people have. And the longer you spend not talking about that, the less normalized it is. And the longer you spend not talking about how you really feel, the worse it is. That proves my theory, long-winded as it is, Christopher with an F is a bitch. I don't remember when we first talked. Oh. I have no idea. No, maybe you had a blackout. <laughs> So I guess everyone's meeting everyone and Sergio comes and talks to Chrysaly and he asks how we met and he has no idea. She did not make a good impression on her and she is his second mortal enemy. His first being of course Christopher, but everybody seems to not find this guy really cool. And you know, I gotta say, this is a testament to Amanda again. The fact that she knows other people do not really fancy this boy, but she willingly and wholeheartedly accepts him for who he is and never asks him to change. Proving again, Amanda is a 10. You get into the pods, and the first thing you said was, hey, did you just yawn? And I'm like, how am I gonna prove that I didn't yawn? Holy shit, he's finding this hilarious. This is not even funny, bro. And he's laughing like she's freaking Louis CK. It's not that funny. I didn't get to know anything about you, but it was like bickering right away. I asked you what your name was and you yes. were like, why do you need to know? He just thought it was the government trying to get him. Who is this? And he's like, what? How do you know I exist? What? How did you know there was a person behind this wall? Relax, I'm not a cop. Are you my tax people? Some yeah. of that date was that I just thought, who the hell was that? I was just like, hell no, that is not happening. God, he's moving his tongue and laughing. This is one of those, if you ever have like a stand-up show, this is the guy you want. And then these are the people that get zoomed in, like when they show the people laughing, like your show Sojo, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. that's the kind of laughter that everyone needs at their show. That's amazing. I'm having a hard time getting a grip on him. He's like a little kinder surprise. Which is why they recall the original Kinder Surprise because it was half dynamite, half candy. Some kids got their heads blown off. I don't know why Kinder would ever do that. Thank you, Chrysalie, for that absolutely, specifically, very correct statement. I think I'm like that as a person. I like to provoke. That's my thing. Isn't it self-destructive to do it in a situation where you want to find a life partner? So that whole interaction ends with Sergio saying, I'm a provoker, that's who I am. And Chrysalie actually giving some really good food for thought by saying, is that really what you wanna be, especially to a lifelong partner? You wanna be a provocative guy. Is that something that you want in a long-term relationship? And it's it's good thought. So good on Chrysalie for saying that. 
Nah. So I thought this was like over. I thought Swedish Vanessa left, but she's been here the whole time. And now they're having brunch and she's about to tell them that they're gonna move in to their new homes. Now you're about to take a big step into the next phase of this experiment, moving in together. Neither of us have lived with a partner before. We're very new to this. And that's how the episode ends. Episode five begins. There's only nine episodes, so we're actually going to be more than halfway through this. Woo! Whoa. Used to talk, talk about everything. The joy of my heart. Ah, yes, I like that one. The joy of my heart. The poop in my butt. The tooth for my toothbrush. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing the skid mark of my underwear? How are you doing the bunions on my toes? How are you doing? How have you been today? It was really fun to meet everyone and talk to everyone, and especially Mira, who I became really close with. Bruh, he looks like a GTA 5 custom character in a cutscene. Whoa, who gave you that outfit, man? Every day he looks more and more like a Jimi Hendrix, very dollar store cosplay. God, what mystery are you solving? The mystery of where your fashion sense went? What the hell? It just feels really good to hang out with everyone. I'm very happy. Everything is perfect. It couldn't have gone better in the slightest. But that's not even close to true. I'm sorry, NPC conversation man, you're lying. You literally explained to Lucas why things weren't perfect and things are not perfect because she's not validating you and you know that. How can you sit there and say things are perfect when even you know they're not perfect? Come on. Lying to other people is one thing. Lying to yourself is just bleh. I feel so good. It's like, nope. I'm just super happy. If there's something that I might appreciate a little more of, maybe a nice compliment once in a while. Wow. That's the most passive aggressive way I've ever heard that said. I'm super happy, but if there's one thing that I had to change, you could actually compliment me. That would make me actually so much happier. But if I had to actually pick one thing from the perfect relationship, it would actually be if she noticed me. I guess that would change it. But I'm just super happy that I'm not like Sergio. So. I'm a very verbal person. I want to remind you of how beautiful you are, how sexy you are. How nice you are, how radiant you are. Oh yeah, in case she forgets, oh my god. She's like, can't find a mirror, and he's like, you're sexy! And then she's like, oh, thank god. Whew, I thought I was gonna be ugly. Thank you. Man, But it's like, I don't get it back. For example, I haven't received a single instance of physical validation. I thought he said the physical stuff was great, like, ages ago. So she doesn't kiss him, hold him, touch him, say anything nice to him. Oh my god, he's actually her brother. I understand what you mean. And it's like, when and if I give you a compliment, it's because I really mean it and not because I just want to say something back. Oh, she, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I kept pausing that, but she said when and if. She didn't say if and when I give you a compliment. She said when and if I even give you a fucking compliment. It'll be from the heart, okay? It won't just be from my ass cheeks, okay? If I give you a damn compliment, you fake Australian you. So there's a big problem with their relationship. Katya is not attracted to him. She's just not able to say these things. He literally goes out and says things like the relationship is perfect while still saying you haven't physically validated me or emotionally done that at all. His, his physical and emotional needs are not met and he still has the goal to say this is perfect. I would rather work on a relationship that is not half as good knowing where the pratfalls are as opposed to just pretending everything's perfect and then it sinks. Because if you don't actually address these issues, they just blow up in your face. At least Sergio is ready to stop making Eiffel Tower weird analogies as soon as he feels like he's been wrong. He's able to talk to Amanda, hopefully she can talk to him back. But Christopher is out here just like, everything is perfect. It's about as perfect as this leopard shirt that's green. It's just the pants are for around the house. Well, don't you want to wear something underneath? There's a lot of hair showing. Did you see? It's what you get. I want to make a good first impression. He says after exposing his chest hair that looks like a jungle. What you see is that what you get. Your dad put his head there, he get lost. Not my fault. I don't know what to say. I get trees down there. Forest. Amazon Prime. What do I say? Okay. A little bit Russian? I don't know. Oh, sorry. They're meeting the parents. I fully forgot to say that. They're meeting the parents and Sergio and Amanda are two very religious people. So their families are religious and, you know, things could either go very right or very wrong in that situation. Do you think there's any topic we should absolutely not talk about? Like religion? Or... No, you can talk about that. I think they'd be interested to hear what you have to say. I guess, uh, 9-11. Don't talk about that. That's needless in Sweden. Don't talk about your pubes, actually. That's... You want, you want me to continue about things you shouldn't talk about? I can I can name a few. When we move in together in your apartment in Solna, I'd love to... I want to go half and half on rent and everything else, expenses and so on. 
was it? Meanwhile, back at Katya and Christopher's place, Christopher skipped the step where they fall in love and are attracted to each other, and he's straight to let's move in together. He didn't even say when or if. He's like, I'm going to move in with you. We're gonna be splitting that in half and everything will be fine, right? Fully just impeding on her progress. Like, it's pretty evident that Katya is a self-sufficient and independent person, not someone who is, uh, you get the type of people who are like very clingy, needy. Some people love that, other people don't. It strikes me that Katya is not that, which is completely fine. And it's also okay to have someone who's needy. Sometimes it works really well. The question that I have for you guys is, do you think if Katya met someone who she was attracted to physically and personally, she would be feeling the same way? Would she give the physical validation to that person? Would she be okay with moving in? Because she seems to be very back offish with him. Do you think it would be different with another person? I think yes. We feel totally in sync about how we talk about the future. He brings it up a lot. When he moves, we'll do this and so on. He is one step ahead of me. So I, I don't know. I guess she's not really confident about moving in with Christopher. I don't know why this dude's even talking about shit like moving in when he can't get past the fact that she's not validating him physically. She's barely validating his fucking parking. So if you could fix that issue, I don't know why moving in. You're He's walking on those backwards. He's like, I'll marry you. We'll move in. At some point, you'll like me, but we'll do it like that. Then we'll be strangers. Good stuff, Christopher. Today, Oscar and I are going to meet my mom and my older sister. Meanwhile, Mira and Asuka are also getting ready to meet the parents, and Mira says this weird thing. I'm a bit nervous about what they will think about it all. When I've talked about a future husband before, I, I haven't really described an Oscar. What did you describe? I just want to know what her type is. Apparently, it's a guy who doesn't wear chinos, pronounces Brie properly, and isn't like Asuka. She, she's trying to date Booker T from WWE, who's a black man with dreads, and also wears knee pads and definitely no pants ever. So I think that's who she's talking about. He's really not what I'd imagined. <laughs> but... What did you imagine in Sweden? Did you imagine an Ikea store with a penis? Like, what the fuck did you imagine? Oscar is like the normalist guy. He's done nothing to anyone and people are like, he's not what I imagined. This guy... Okay. He's just existing and people are like, Ugh. what? It's my daughter's choice, so yeah. He's definitely not the type of guy she would go for if she saw him in a bar or on the town. Okay, I'm gonna say something to you, lady, sister, whoever you are, Miriam. If you're going to the bar or the town searching for Mr. Right, you're gonna find Mr. Wrong or Mr. I'm gonna throw up in your handbag, okay? I don't know. You're probably gonna find Mr. Reman before you find Mr. Right, okay? All I'm saying is that if I wanna go to the club, it's because I I find a girl who can make two cups jiggle from her butt cheeks. If I want to find a wife, I go to the library and ask where the fiction section is so I can get a, a girlfriend because that's in the fiction section. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't go to the goddamn church to find a fish. Does that make any sense, Mary? What is this guy that she's looking for? Who is this guy? I'm not nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm losing it. Are you nervous? I feel quite calm, actually. Me too. Okay, so Sergio and Amanda go to meet the parents and in a very cute moment Sergio is like I'm not nervous at all and then it cuts to the camera and he's like yes I am oh my god So he just didn't want to let Amanda feel his nervousness and you can see that he's nervous because he stands behind her at the door He's not that egotistical person who's really like out there anymore Suddenly begins the redemption arc of Sergio who is now seemingly the most gentleman of all gentlemen The dad of course has a problem with the marriage not because it's Sergio but because it's so soon and he's a pastor and he's like we haven't done something like this before but Sergio sort of comforts him and actually does a very sick thing by sick I mean good I knew that he asked the dad for uh, his daughter's hand in marriage, which is something he didn't have to do, but it's just a sign of respect. And I think that was really good of Sergio to do. As a pastor, I don't feel comfortable with this. So I was hoping to ask you for her hand, but you already have it, don't you? So I just think if they replaced the music with like evil serial killer mu music, it'd be like a whole different scene. I just want to ask for her hand. But you already have it, don't you? Yeah, but I want the other one. Love is blind, but also handless. So I can't do anything other than give her hand to you and ask you to respect each other, love each other. Yes, you have my word. He ends the episode by saying, I would like to shake your hand. So maybe Sergio's eyeing out his hand after hers, but that's how that ends. And with that, we end episode five and go on to episode six. <sighs>
Crazy. Today I'm gonna meet Kaja's friends. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Why are you feeling his titties? What did I stumble onto? This is like the new episode. He got an upper angle. He's like, I'm gonna meet Kaja's friends and family here. Whoa. Why are you milking your titties? <laughs> no wonder she doesn't like you. God, I don't even know where to start. It feels so strange. How does it feel living together? Does he do his chores? He does all the chores. Nice. So Kaja meets her friends and essentially says that Christopher is almost too nice. Like he does everything for her and she doesn't even have room to do her own stuff. So initially they're like, oh, that's really cool. But then she sort of brings up the issue that like all he does is praise her and she thinks that it might be a bit too much. He's too nice, so to speak. He expresses himself verbally and gives me very nice compliments all the time, but it's almost like, okay, should I say thank you again? I don't think she's a social validation sort of plus and verbal might not be her thing. And this dude's every day, he just wakes up thanking the Lord that she exists. I feel like it's almost energy draining towards her. Like, yeah, uh, you are also, I also thank the Lord for you every second of the day. Like it might be a bit hard to match his energy level. I do see it as a potential risk. And when someone is too nice and maybe doesn't really challenge me, they start being mean instead. Exactly. That's like such a warped concept in like theory that if someone's so nice that you just start turning mean. But like, I actually can understand if someone doesn't challenge you as a person, how are you gonna grow? He's like one of those parents who makes their kids believe that they can do anything. And then they go into the real world and they're like, holy shit. I'm unprepared for life because my dad said I can be an astronaut and I'm just an ass. There's a, a horrible difference. That if I bring it up, I'll hurt him because he'll take it the wrong way. That's probably my main concern. And I'm like, do I actually feel strongly enough for him? And this is the thing that I came to in the last episode. I was saying that Christopher, although he said everything was perfect, life was perfect, he was unable to actually bring up the many concerns he has had about Katya not being able to validate him. And she does the same thing where she's like, ooh, I don't know if I can talk to him and tell him how I really feel. And that pretty much solidifies the fact this relationship is not going down the right path because neither of them can communicate to each other how they really feel. It's all well and good to present on the surface level that you're doing fine, but you need to actually feel fine at the root. Just then, like an evil villain, Christopher comes in, purple hair and all. He wears the most dank glasses. He's honestly like a villain from the 2000s. Hey. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm great. That's a good start. Bro, she starts drinking the wine as he comes in. She's like, oh, this again? Okay, ah, oh, and starts glugging down some wine. Ah, oh, I don't know if that's a subconsciously she did that, but that's just funny. How is it living with Katya? I think it's going really well. We share all the chores and- She said you do them all. Is that not hard for you? It's not a problem. I'm on vacation. You have to give it to him for wanting to take care of someone. Like that's not a bad thing. And like, it shouldn't be an issue for other people that a dude is like so nice. But at the same time, I would, I don't think that I'd be happy if someone did everything for me. So I, I can fully see where Katya is coming from. Like, I don't care how nice you are, I'd like to pull my own weight. And it almost seems like he's stifling her progress. She's not even able to do anything without him being like, here, let me do that for you. And I don't even know if he does a good job. Imagine if he's cooking like shit and everything, and she's like, oh, you keep offering. Do you want to poison me? It's never been good. But let's cut to real life when you both are working. Will you still do everything? I will. Uh, he said he's self-employed, which means he's unemployed, so come on. <laughs> I'm self-employed. What do you see as your biggest obstacle? I live in Visby and run my own business there. I also live in Yarvzo, where I work for my mom. Oh, come on, man. You can't run your own business and work for your mom. That's the definition of, I don't actually do anything. I just dye my hair from time to time. What job does he have? The English subtitles say self-employed. I say unemployed. He says he's got his own business and a mom that he works for. Someone tell me what he does, because I know Sergio is a DJ football coach. He does both at the same time. He's in the club coaching people, and he's on the field DJing for his team. I've been able to travel a lot, but I would move in with Katya and Solna. It's a bit scary, because I don't want to jump into her safe space. Katya's apartment in Solna is really her apartment. You better get her another bottle of that wine. I've seen her drink four or five times from this glass now. She's feeling the pressure, and it's pretty visible while this man is talking that she's like drunk more than she has the whole time. 
You wouldn't mind living in Stockholm? Definitely. You're not worried your children will have a Stockholm accent? <laughs> Doesn't that scare you? No, that's not scary. Katya probably died inside when her friend mentioned children and she was like, don't put ideas into his head. What are you doing? I feel like he's already thought about our kids' names. Christopher definitely is one step ahead of her at all times. He's one step ahead of me. I didn't think he would be absolutely ecstatic to move in with her. I just thought like people were taking it slow on the show. He's like, this is when we'll move in. I'm going to have kids with you. 23 days from now, the baby will pop out then and we'll have a good time from now to then, okay? Then I'll retire. Are you flexible about everything or is it just that we Stockholm sure is a big alternative? She has said from the beginning that she isn't ready to move from Stockholm. You have to respect that. You have to live with that. You know what the sad thing is? Like, she's looking like she wants to murder him or leave, maybe both. I can't help but think if she was with whoever she thought was the right person and they said the exact same things that Christopher was saying, she would be over the moon. Like, can you imagine the person that you love being like, yes, I will, I will move to where you want to go because I love you that much. That's ultimate romantic. However, when it's a dude who dyes his hair and you don't particularly like him, then it's like, oh my God, he's stalking me. <laughs> it's actually amazing how one person can change your whole perspective. I wonder if he's just selling himself to us. Maybe he thinks we want to hear that, or is that all genuine to make it work with Katya? Trust me, I feel like he wants to move. If He would do it like today if she asked. And I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if he, like his individuality sometimes gets called into question. He is just very much, I want to be with her. Nothing of his seems to matter almost. And it's, it's quite crazy. Are we a good fit? Yes. <laughs> we are. <laughs> what was that, man? Are we a good fit? Yes. <sighs> we are. That heavy sigh, long pause thing before that. I don't know. Katya probably like messaged her friends like, we're not friends anymore. You fully made this way worse. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know what, I'll give uh, Christopher props for not wearing his ascot slash headband that he normally wears to every single event. Good for you, bro. I just wonder how he can be so flexible with everything. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be able to move. Well, thank God she's not marrying you, huh? God, I don't even know, like, so on the fence. Because I'm like, this dude definitely is right for someone and someone will be like, wow, this guy is the coolest dude ever. But to a lot of other people, I can see exactly how it'd be like, please, can you not move so fast? I need to take my time with this decision. I can see both sides equally. The only thing that is topping this right now is the fact that there is the biggest twist on Love is Blind Sweden and it comes right now. Sergio, the man who I just said was gonna have a redemption arc, I forgot about this somehow. Before he has a redemption arc, have a baby and not with the girl from Love is Blind, which is just <laughs> Apparently this man was in Barcelona doing his thing and he did his thing so well that he might have impregnated a woman. So that's an issue. And Chrysalie is gonna pull him out of the way to talk to him about it. I need to talk to you. Yeah. But I think it's best that we go away and talk about it just us for right now. Right now, you mean? Man, this dude was drinking. He was like, me? Who else? There's like two people in the room and she pointed to you. He's like, who, is, who are you talking to? I don't need to go with you anywhere. <laughs> Where did she come from, by the way? She just popped into the door like nosy neighbor and stuff. Something happened? No, we'll have to see about that. Wow, that's dramatic. But is everything all right? Let's not think about it now. I'll tell you everything. All right. Yeah, so Chrysalie pulls him aside in the most dramatic fashion possible. Like, it would be impossible at this rate not to think something wrong has happened. She couldn't have done that in any other way. Like, she managed to make everyone worried. But anyway, she takes him to a coffee shop and she's like, Hey, heard you having baby. Tell me all about it. Crazy part is, Sergio doesn't know anything about it either. If this information gets out, or rather, mm -hmm. when this information reaches Amanda, yes. and it doesn't come from you, it will destroy your relationship. Bruh, you didn't even explain to him anything. You're so bad at life, what are you doing? You just pop into their house, hey, don't mean to make you feel weird, Amanda, but can I borrow your husband? I just want to talk to him in private, even though you know that I hate him. Don't worry, it's nothing good. Yes, I'll have a tea, thank you. Can you tell him what it's about? A woman in Barcelona is going to give birth to your child. In three months. This is, she's telling it like it's a fucking trailer. 
Which what? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine and you're not. She called him like she was the fucking doctor. In three months, a woman who I don't know from a place I've never been is going to have your baby who doesn't look like you. She's also not pregnant. This dude is supposed to be the most shocking news, but listening to it back, she just dragged that as much as she could. Episode six starts off like this. I saw that an Instagram group had been created with all the girls who were yeah. in the pods. Okay. All of the girls except for Amanda. They luckily couldn't find her to add her. Hold up, Amanda. I don't know how to go above a 10 here. Like, she's been a 10. She's somehow above that. She's, like, getting brownie points for not even wanting to be involved with the constant bullshit of group chats and the nonsense of myths and random rumors and gossip. The fact that she just never wanted to be involved and they couldn't even find her is just... I don't, she was a 10 before. She's a 12 now, man. This, these people need to leave Amanda alone. At first, it was just about how everyone was doing and what it was like to be home then the rest of the chat was about you wow okay <laughs> they have a hate sergio group chat <laughs> no wonder they didn't invite amanda that would be horrible hey uh we're just hating on your husband do you have anything to say <laughs> all right cool we'll add that in some pretty harsh things have been said the poor store this poor man child is looking around the room like oh I just came to get coffee. I didn't know it was gonna be like this. She didn't even insinuate like that there are claims this is happening. She was just like, this is exactly what happened. I know where you were last year. You were fucking that girl in Barcelona. Now she's gonna have a child because you didn't pull out Sergio. I don't know if she knows his last name, but she somehow has everything she needs to like claim that he's having a kid. Like I'm not saying Sergio is the best guy, but like this is a lot even for like him. They say a woman in Barcelona is going to give birth to your child. My first reaction was if any of this is true, it's really crazy. <laughs> they need to have him in commercials for like surprise. Like I don't know, whatever like they have surprising stuff in Sweden. Like his face is just so shocked at any given moment. This is very shocking information, but like last scene he was still chewing while shocked i didn't know how to handle it because i think amanda is so damn lovely if any of this is true i don't quite know what to say yeah amanda is going to find out about this uh -huh. only if you guys tell her and only if it's true i mean we're skipping over the largest and most important detail of this whole thing if it's not true it's just a bunch of bullshit and people are actually sabotaging this man's relationship which is disgusting so i'm, I'm just saying if it's not true this is a filthy nasty rumor only serves as a purpose to make this guy's life harder and Amanda's for absolutely no reason. If you actually love this woman, Amanda, you'll console her and support her regardless instead of spread rumors if they're not true. Now, if it is true, again, it's none of the girl's problem. It's Sergio and Amanda's problem and possibly the girl in Barcelona. If information emerges confirming that any of this is true, I will have Amanda's back. Oh, no shit, Crystal. Holy crap, you can't. I just, I don't even understand how someone can say if this information is true at the very end. That's like me pulling someone aside and being like, I know that you cheated. If that's actually true, then I'm going to be very mad. I'm just guessing at that point. I don't know how to handle this. Amanda's going to be really upset. So they insinuate that Sergio actually did, like, you know, do some stuff in Barcelona. And I don't even think that's untrue. I feel like, yeah, it probably could be. And perhaps even Sergio's like, mm. yeah, maybe. But uh, he doesn't actually deny anything, which is something, like, I found very funny. Like, why, at no point did you stop Chris Lee and be like, no, that didn't happen. He was just like, oh, oh, she's going to be upset. Holy moly. I'm still a virgin. Do I tell people? No. Yep. No. Mm-hmm. Yes, I slept with that woman. That will make it seem like I'm less of a loser. Hello? So anyway, he has to go home now and tell her this. And rightfully so, Amanda is anxious and nervous because Chrisley came in and made everything, like, <laughs> nervous for them. So she's been sitting there waiting. Oh, dear. What's that look? I'm looking at you anxiously. The only thing I know is that there was a group chat 
Can I just say, I understand Sergio has said some dumb shit. Sergio does some dumb shit. I'd be the first one to say. But at the same time, having a group chat and talking mean about someone is a really petty thing to do when you're a teenager. When you're above the age of 20, it's actually asinine at this point. Why even badmouth someone? It's not gonna make you feel any better. Maybe temporary satisfaction. And at the end of the day, it doesn't help your relationship. I feel like this guy has definitely had a lot of people say and do things and he never seems to come back or be petty and I actually like that energy in 2024 where it's like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to focus on the stuff that actually matters to me, which he does. And I, I genuinely appreciate that. And Chrissy had read it and she she reacted quite strongly to it. That's a... Oh, they got them. I, bro, I went the whole series without realizing they got those stupid cups back. And I'm fucking stainless steel flask. I'm not gonna show you how much drink I have in it so I can get drunk every single day cups. Oh man, this is what most of the people of Love is Blind is inebriated. That's the only reason they do the show. There it is. Said stuff like that I'm some kind of misogynist. I have a child in Barcelona. <laughs> he threw it in there. <laughs> they said that I'm uh, evil, I have a child. They said a lot of things. <laughs> he just threw that in. <laughs> Slipped that shit in. I'm some kind of chauvinist pig that... Child in Barcelona? Yeah. <laughs> they said I'm a pig, they call me that a pig. Child? Yeah, they call me a child. They said I do have one, but they said I am one. I think it's important that you find out about this so that it doesn't come as some kind of shock. Well, it depends on the truth. Bruh, he is not good at talking his way out of situations, I will say that. He's supposed to calm her down, and she's like, is this true? He's like... <laughs> Bro, you gotta, like, react a little better than that, man. Tell me everything you need to tell me, no matter how dark it is, as long as it doesn't come from someone else at some other time. I'm just very disappointed, but... So Amanda basically is like, you need to tell me stuff. And she even says, no matter how dark, no matter how this or that, you need to tell it to me. Having that space of communication, being opening that up to your partner is like, it's good. I mean, she's giving that opportunity to him. He's too shrecked up to say anything. I don't know if he's just in shock or something, but he, instead of just saying the words, no, there's no child, he's like, I don't know. So <laughs> I don't think he's making this situation any better and it's, it's making everyone a bit nervous. I can get angry too if it goes to the extent of deliberately hiding things. Maybe it's a bit prejudiced to think that not everyone understands you. Has someone went to Sweden and used the word prejudice wrongly and taught everyone? Everyone is saying the word prejudice in a good situation. Remember when Katya was like, ah, oh, I'm prejudiced to think Australian people are nice or like Australian people are sexy. They just threw that word and someone said prejudice, they start using it like good or bad. They're just like, ah. Oh. I'll take a chance. I've never felt at home here among Swedish people, and that has definitely shown a bit in my dating history. I've never liked Swedish people. Voluntarily goes on a show called Love is Blind Sweden. You make, make it make sense, I can't. It would be hard for people to understand my family as much as it would be hard for me to feel at home in a family that doesn't talk or socialize like we do. What is this? What is this? They're playing like sad music. She's like, it's always hard for me. It shows like visual pictures of like she's dancing, having fun with her partner. This is really tough. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I never understood Swedish guys. They're both just dancing. What? What am I listening to, man? We're both living with a partner for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. So Mira's family didn't like the way Swedish Jim looked. And surprise, surprise, they're very lovely people. And it leads her to think, maybe she can date people from different races, religions, or creeds. Wow, what a bold thought in 2024. One of my biggest fears with Oscar was the whole culture clash thing. I felt our families would be so different. They were not at all the stereotypical Swedish family. What did you expect? Did you expect Ikea meatballs and the Swedish chef? Like what? I don't understand what she constantly thinks Swedish people are and why she has such a problem living in Sweden and being like, ah, Swedish guys, they're pretty stupid. I hate them. I'd rather go to Bollywood, but I'll just stay here and love is blind Sweden because they don't have love is blind India yet. I feel more and more that our two worlds can go together and that you don't have to be with someone from exactly the same background as you, gone through the same difficulties as you. Yeah, there are. Martin Luther King over here finally managed to make that speech, or that thought pattern that you don't have to be with someone who's exactly the same as you 
to have fun and to actually be in love. Believe it or not, you can love someone who isn't exactly you. And I cannot believe I'm actually standing here processing this thought. She's above the age of one. She should know this. I'll just put your charger in our room. He is very, very kind-hearted. He is always complimentary towards me. So anyway, from one egghead to the next, we go to Christopher and Katya. Uh, you, you let me know who the egghead is, because I don't in this place. But what I feel in certain situations is that maybe he doesn't know how to stand up for himself in a way that I find attractive. I mean, it's not a maybe. You haven't explained that to him, so... If he actually figured that out, it would be a nothing short of a miracle, so... <laughs> yeah, I get what she's saying. He's not like one of them hard gangster Swedish people. He's he's a wankster. I don't... I guess that's what he is. Because of his lack of firmness, I can get a little annoyed and quite agitated. I get the impression that you might lose yourself in all of it if you move in with me. Uh, okay, so she wants someone to like set her in her place. And like, I know that sounds kind of stupid because you should probably be mediating yourself. At some points, it is nice to have like a partner who could be like, hey, hey, wake up, pick yourself up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna love you, but it's also gonna be tough love at some time. So I get, I guess that's what she needs. And Christopher just, that's not his personality. And that's completely okay. He's just gotta find someone who can fit that. I have thoughts about how if I had really been in love, I probably wouldn't have had any problems living that close. Damn, we're on episode six and she just drops it in like it's nothing. She's like, if I had actually been in love, maybe I would really feel this guy and move in. She's never said this before. Like the whole first five episodes, she's hinted at the fact that maybe he's a bit too nice. Maybe they wouldn't get along. By episode six, she's like, fuck it. I'm not in love with him. He sucks. I need like actual Australian people. This guy sucks. He's the IKEA of people. He's sturdy, but I would rather go for something better. I think I feel this way mainly because I may not but be I'm in love. Evil. 19 Daga till Brolop. Yes, I speak Swedish, of course. 19 days until the weddings. I didn't need subtitles. Brolop soon approaching, everyone meets each other for the second time. This time, Love is Blind does that thing where they bring out guests who could have been love interests to try and fuck up the actual relationships because, you know, this show is sabotage worthy. People are throwing things around behind your back, but you have no idea what it is or who's saying it. Exactly. So, Rasmus, who seems to be the only neutral party, he's the Switzerland of Sweden, so to speak, is the only neutral party in this whole thing. He talks to Sergio and is actually not biased towards anyone and basically says, you don't know who's been saying this, and if there's no proof, how can you actually say this? And he's sort of standing up for his homie in a way, which I, I appreciate that. Isn't that insane? It is bizarre, but I also welcome this turbulent time because that's where you can see how strong the relationship is. Sergio is the only person I know who would be like, yeah, people are making rumors that I have a kid. This this will really test my relationship. Let's see how strong this shit is. Everyone else would be freaking out being like, honey, that's not true. He's like, yes, believe them. Let's see if you like it now, okay? If you get through this, you can date me. The magician, football, DJ, coach. Yeah, I added magician into it. I'm gonna be a magician next year too. What is going on? There's a rumor going around. Of course you get pissed off. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so these two people come from the chambers of hell to actually distribute the myth. I don't know how it's any of their business. They're not even on the show. They didn't even find love, yet they found a rumor and they're using it to try and like break down a couple. Why is that even a thing? I mean, at first when we heard it, it came as a shock. He's expecting a child. How can you hide something like that? I'll tell you how you can hide something like that. If you don't even know about it, then you'd be very good at hiding that. You could play hide and seek with a son if you don't know you have him. No matter how unpleasant it is, and whatever the outcome will be, she has to know. She deserves to know the truth. We support Amanda. Mm -hmm. I would be very surprised if you didn't support Amanda. I'd be so surprised if you're like, he needs to have that baby, okay? Men need to do this. I support Sergio. Amanda, nothing but trouble. But let's just be honest here. Nothing's been said. We don't know who said it. We don't know why this person said it, when they've said it, what the person's credibility is. And if we just start believing rumors, then pretty much be Instagram, which is what everyone does. We haven't heard that you have a wife and child either, but we did hear that there is a girl who's pregnant with your okay. child. She's having the baby in four months. Yeah. Okay, I heard three. Yeah, they did actually change the date to four months. 
Like she got less pregnant. <laughs> she was like, ooh, that's, that's a bit too threatening. All right, Sergio, you got four months to give me child support while this baby's popping out the oven, okay? Really worried for Amanda's sake because when we got this information, we have to let Amanda know. And the expecting father would like to know too. Yes, but think about it from our perspective. How is he supposed to think about it from your perspective realistically? How is a man who's just trying to enjoy his love is blind life finally gets this goal of his dreams? Now you're saying he has a kid. How is he supposed to be like, oh, let me be in your shoes. The people who hate me. Oh yes, you want to ruin my life. I can see. I get it now. Carry on with your rumor. How can you be so selfish as to say, see it from our perspective when spreading a rumor that you don't know is the truth? I d Poof, this is tough, man. That's why I'm like, what's going on? If it's true, it's really crazy not to have been honest with Amanda about it. I mean, it's really suspect. What if it's a lie though? If it's a lie, then I guess, um, then you're off the hook, buddy then I guess I'm sorry for trying to ruin your life. I don't know. Nobody ever has said that part. They're just like, if it's true, if, oh God. That's, that's a, that's a dangerous game to play. I'm telling you, I don't even know anything about this. No, but if it had been true, it would have been crazy, you know? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um. <laughs> How can you even say shit like that, bro? <laughs> can you imagine me being like, yo, imagine if I beat Michael Jordan at basketball. I know, I know it's not true, but if it had been true, that would be crazy. That fucking is, is nothing. That's nothing. That's literally nothing. Just saying the words, if it had been true, it would have been crazy. You can say it. Fucking anything. Nothing is anything until the truth is proven. The day someone comes forward and says, Absolutely. this is the truth and here's the proof, then you have to deal with it. Mm, he's explaining a reasonable doubt, innocent until proven guilty, but I like his way of saying it. I, what was it? Nothing is the truth until it is proven. But this sort of thing isn't like that. If it's true, then absolutely. The only thing we have said is that there is a rumor. We stand by that. Why are you guys spreading rumor? Do you not understand that's like a horrible thing to do? Can you imagine if Sergio just got out this conversation and was like, hey, those two girls, they got VD, v venereal disease. How do you not know what that is? They're like, whoa, where'd you hear that from? And he's like, I don't know, I guess my mind, it's just a rumor right now, but if enough people talk about it, someone will believe it. Spreading rumors is so childish. It's so childish. Where does this source come yes, from? I understand. So that a response can be made. That's why it's a bit strange to receive all this. But it upsets us. And it is a very serious situation. How y'all not gonna actually answer a question that's very valid? Who told you this? That matters, doesn't it? Shouldn't it matter? Is that person a spiteful person? Is that person known to be truthful? Is it one person? Is it a lot of people? You can't just be like, no, 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 no. But like, if it's true, doesn't matter who said it. Doesn't, I said it. Doesn't, don't shut up. I said it, I'll say it again. Yes, but someone has to bear the consequences here. It's impossible for me to respond yes. to this and yes. I'm being dragged yeah, through the mud. Proud of Shrek over here for standing his ground and also props to Rasmus for actually explaining a very logical way of dealing with the situation. Honestly, you know Sergio and I have turbulent chemistry. Like, he's not gonna be the godfather of my children or anything. You never know, he's known to be having kids with everyone. So he might be, you might be, his uncle. I saw that he and I have a mutual friend, so I called him. He started laughing when I mentioned the child thing. He was like, no, I really don't think or hope so. Why did you even call this whole meeting if you did this? If you called the mutual friend, the only person, and he's like, no, I really don't think so. What was this whole thing for? If he doesn't know about the child, why would the woman who is pregnant inform other people, but then not say anything to him? When people are lying, they use the number three. Have any of you goals used the number three? Because everything you've said, it seems to be a bunch of number two, man. I can't understand how the fuck anyone would make up these rumors and then backtrack to the point that they're like, you know what? You make a good point, Amanda. Yeah, the fact that she only told the group chat because she was trying to be spiteful really does make it seem like she's lying. Now that you talk some sense into us, I can see why you didn't join this group chat because it would be disbanded in five minutes. Amanda is so sensible. She doesn't get overwhelmed by the thought of this. She rationally thought it out and within minutes it's, this thing is debunked. They wrote that the baby is due in three months. If I were you, 
I just assume that all this is just made up. Then why the fuck did you even bring it up? Oh my god. Why'd you pull Sergio aside and bring this whole shit up? Then you summon two demons from the afterworld to come and like spread rumors about him. What the hell was all this about? This was for nothing. You flip flopped. When she was on Sergio, she was like, all right, this, this is true. And I'm gonna tell Amanda, as soon as she's with Amanda, don't believe the hype, it's probably not true. Otherwise, you'll just drive yourself crazy thinking about it. So I don't know if it's true. Now it seems to be more false than true, but Sergio has just said flat out no. And Amanda seems to be pretty solid. So let's see how they move past that. Meanwhile, at the other end of this party, Christopher is finally doing what he does best and dressing up like a villain. Also talking about why he doesn't think Katya is actually putting in the effort. He's, he's finally fed up. I'll leave Gotland and I'll do everything to make it work, but she's not fully on board. What is she doing to make it work? Exactly. I want him to stand up to me. I just have to be like, stop it, Katya. Her name is Katya. I thought it was Katya the whole time. Anyway, uh, yeah, Katya. I can't do it. Anyway, Katya, she's like, man, maybe I need to be mean to this guy or he won't stand up to me. So I don't know what she's gonna do, but their relationship is just crumbling as stuff goes by. Oh, he had feelings and maybe they were stronger than he could communicate, but Oscar I mean, could communicate there and then. What has made me so in love with him? I am in love. Oh, okay, finally, one of the two uh, brunettes, forgot what they were, man. One of them actually finally falls in love. And you know what? Jim always wins. He, he might not have got Pam first in the office, but he did get her in the end. So as usual, Swedish Jim winning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it took her realizing that he doesn't have to be her family in order for her to fall in love. Good stuff, Mira. You, you, figured, it, you figured out the key. Don't date your family. <laughs> What the fuck? Damn, you want her now. <laughs> ah, so just then Lucas finally sees the other person he could have dated, Carolina. Carolina, I think. Carolina. Whatever. She comes hopping through and she's blonde and everything that he likes. So he's just like, oh, could have had her, but I got that. She's blonde and short, which is kind of my type. Anything could have happened between us. We had a lot of similarities, and she's a powerful woman. Blonde and short, like Owen Wilson. Wow. How are you? I'm good. Carolina, I presume? Yes. Welcome to my little house. Your lounge. Exactly. Is this what substitutes for humor in Sweden? I don't, I don't know if I'd be able to do this, man. Do the comedians just tell you facts there, and then people are like, ha, good one. Yeah, look at you. When we went on our last date, I hadn't decided if we were going to break up or anything. What? No, not at all. Okay, so this man clearly is having boner problems because as soon as she comes and sits down, he's like, okay, let me explain to her that I only chose that other girl because of like a coin toss. He basically makes it seem like he wasn't even sure of who he chose even at the very last minute. And that sort of gets Carolina to be like, oh, uh, really? And then, like a good person, she goes and tells the other girl because it's not love is blind if you're not trying to actively ruin someone's relationship. How could you have not decided when you gave her the necklace? Well, I guess you were happy when you got the gift. I understood it was just about that. Like, okay. Uh, yeah, she gave him underwear. Not, not random, hers. I guess that is pretty random from someone you haven't seen. All right, so maybe you're still deciding, but I do think that it was meant to be. Maybe. Really? All right, so Lucas is sort of debating whether he should have dated Carolina or Amelia because she's like, I think the, you chose the right person. And he's like, maybe, I don't know. Thoughts are swirling around in his head. Meantime, one of the two evil offspring goes to Amanda and tries to explain to her why they think Sergio really is the father of someone in Barcelona. It is not a fact, it's a rumor. So the whole, you must have facts, no, I don't. The more people I talk to, the more it sounds like a rumor that's gone viral. That's good logic, actually. I just want to... You don't need facts. You just need rumors. Who needs facts when you have rumors? Wow. No wonder you're still single. I mean, I don't even know what to say, man. With that attitude, how could you possibly find a partner? I have heard it from several people, and they have heard it from me at the same time. Do you see? No one has a source, at least for now. Oh, hold up. The only thing we got from this last thing is that nobody actually said it. It just got created out of thin air. We can't even pinpoint who said it. 
That's that's perplexing. Someone needs to figure out how a rumor literally started out of nothing. Holy crap, the two biggest mysteries in the world. How are people created and how is this rumor created? What the fuck? I suppose you've met Lucas. Tell me all about it. How was it? I don't want to stir the pot here, but he had his say and I had mine. She instantly starts stirring the pot like she's about to cook. So she goes straight to Amelia and is like, I don't want to mess this up for you, but let me mess this up for you. And she basically says, Lucas has been unsure. When you came back from the date where he gave you the necklace, I thought he had made up his mind when I gave him my gift, but he said that he hadn't. I was like, hmm, interesting. Do you know what's sad about uh, Amelia? That she has to constantly hear things from other people. Like the only time she heard that Lucas was not fully physically engaged with her was like when they were at that meetup where they all saw each other for the first time and the host asked, how's everyone doing? Lucas didn't actually talk to her about that. Now, this is the same thing where he's talking to a different girl and she's telling Amelia, you don't want them to find out. You want them to be like, hey, is this how you feel? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. No feelings of regret on your part? No. She really got the feeling that it wasn't over. Is there something inside of you that regrets not being with her? His penis, I guess. I don't know if it's inside of him, but it really wants to be inside of her. The last thing I want to do is hurt Amelia. Does this dude constantly do this? She like asks him a question and he's like, time out. And then goes to the camera and be like, I don't want to hurt her. Ugh. No, everything's fine. Like every time he's just avoiding actually telling her that this is probably how it's gonna be. Let me save you the frustration. Be angry at me for a day, but respect me for a lifetime for actually saving you this. She truly deserves a man who is confident in his decisions and about her. Makes her feel calm and secure about this. Tell her that, oh my God, dude. I can't give her that. Say that, what are you doing? Okay, so uh, Lucas, I guess, proceeds not to say any of this because they still continue having a relationship after this. So clearly he didn't say that. He was just waiting for him. She's like, do you feel confident? And he just sat there until she went to bed. You are aware of how much I like you and I think that's much more than you like me. Especially during nights like tonight, but also when we both get to see how much the others like their partners. You know what? Drinking is great. Don't endorse that. But like, this guy was drinking, now the truth comes out. He's got that lick of courage. Now he's gonna actually tell her everything he feels. And I'll tell you what, on Love is Blind, they do not hold back. And I don't mean fighting, because none of these people fight. Swedish people, very seemingly respectful, lovely people, but they are so open about sex stuff that it, it's like, whoa, I didn't even know that. This guy's like, you don't, I, you, I thought I could just make you horny with how I looked. That, I didn't even ever think I'd hear a Swedish person say that. I keep asking you, but maybe you could give me a little more appreciation, more That's about it. validation verbally. Good job, Christopher. Hell yeah, buddy. Yeah, you keep that up, baby. Good job, Christopher. Nice ass, Scott. Nice ass, Scott. You haven't validated me once. When we're with each other physically, that is only confirmation to me that we can have a good time when it comes to sex and physical chemistry. There you go. He starts bringing it up. He's like, the only, the only thing good about this whole relationship is that ass that you throw back from time to time. So he needs more than just the sex. I would want to be able to make you horny because of my looks, and I don't know if I do that. <laughs> Gangster. Just saying that on like television show to a girl. <laughs> I want to make you horny because of how I look. This is why I wear the ascot, so you get horny. How is the sex good, but he doesn't make her horny? Like that's, what? Explain that concept to me, bro. And I'm being really honest yeah. right now in terms of like how many times we've had sex and how many yeah. times I've come with you. It's not about your body. <laughs> you know what I mean? This show is like, God, I don't think I've ever heard that in a reality show before, like just so openly. I make you horny. Yeah, I come a lot. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. If I had said, you are drop dead gorgeous, but you didn't make me come, it would be a completely different story. I do consider people around me and their feelings. That's, that's a complicit. It's an insult compliment. She basically said, even though you look like a gargoyle, you still get the job done. Like, I don't, I don't know. Good in bed, but bad in face looks. I don't know. Myself back every time I think about how beautiful and spectacular you are. Probably think it's getting old, but yeah. all the times I've said it, I've even been holding back. Oh, you've been holding back? That wasn't the, oh. There was, you could have done worse than that. But all I get back is like, 
Thank you. When you say it so many times, that makes it lose its meaning. The bad boys always win. That's how it is. There you go. There it is. There it is. Doesn't matter what you're wearing. At some point, he's like, bad boys always win. Am I right? Nice guys finish last. And if Christopher was a nice dude and still allowed her space, time, and effort, then maybe things wouldn't be so bad. It's just that every single second of the day, complimenting her and seemingly expecting something back. There's there's a lot of issues there that are hidden. What do you mean by that? Maybe I should be more of a bad boy. Maybe you need to stand up to me sometimes. Believe me, this is me standing up. I haven't finished talking, Christopher. Sorry. Oh, that's like a comedy, bro. He's like, maybe you need me to stand up to you. I haven't finished talking. Sorry about that. Sorry. Oh my God. Don't do that again. Please don't scream at me. I don't want you to change who you are, but I also don't want you to just roll over for me. Thing is, that is Christopher. He's a rollover type of dude. And there's a ton of people like that. So Christopher will not be short of like partners. Never if he has like that complexion. If you have someone who's independent, you probably need someone who's also independent so that when that stuff happens, you can be like, okay, I'm gonna do my thing, you do your thing, we'll meet back here, it'll be great. I think that's what Christopher is lacking. That's the issue. I don't want you to roll over for me, but, but only until I think it's okay. When you're using this tone, you're a whole other Christopher. You can put on my big boy pants if you want, but I'm not that kind of person. Bro, this is the first time she smiled. Bro, I f you figured it out, man. You just call her out once in a while. Caught you, you're full of shit. She'll be like, oh my God, Christopher, take those pants off. In a relationship, because I know it doesn't work, because then I'd run you over, and I don't want to do that. Do you see what I mean? We haven't seen that. Run her over, bro. Steamroll her. Do ever just come on. You saw her smiling. She's not smiled like that since I've seen the show. She's not smile, bro. The only time you made her smile was when you're trying to stand up for yourself. Do it more often. But I understand how you see me. Honey. You look at me like he's too nice. He's a pussy. He does everything I say. Blah blah blah. <laughs> he's a pussy. <laughs> I can imagine her going to her friends like, how is he? I don't know, I guess he's got nine lives because he's a pussy. What the hell? What does a woman want? Very nice, some rap music to end a relationship between two people who absolutely have never listened to rap in their lives. Episode seven. Of course it starts off with Swedish Jim filming his girlfriend who loves him, who's dancing in Bollywood in Sweden. I'm gonna say that like, if someone actually does that, like takes the camera and films you, that's just, it's not in my nature, but then I realized I'm the one on camera mostly. So the person for me is the person who would be filming me. And I just really sincerely apologize for anyone who has to do that, but. Hi. It feels like we're getting over all these big steps. Yes. And now it's a little easier and feels good, I think. Oh, okay. So I guess everything's fine on the front of Sergio and Amanda. They're finally, like, apparently they seem to have gotten over this or nothing more has come out about the rumor. But Sergio's in one of those moods where he's like, yes, yeah. I think that we've been very clear in our communication. I'm so incredibly grateful. It makes me even more clear that you're the right person. I feel that I will come out of this stronger. I like how none of their issues actually technically got resolved. She never started wearing his bracelet and nothing came out about the, the baby, but they're just like, yeah, all right. Sergio just forgot about the bracelet altogether. She forgot about the baby. They're like, we're fine. It felt like our bond got stronger after. So you remain mm. calm and you know how to listen. I think I would have questioned things a bit more. So no, I'm the one who should be thanking you. Real recognized real. I gotta say, Sergio, recognizing the fact that she is a dime and stuff. Good stuff. Good, this is like, we're fine. This is what Christopher should be doing. Christopher is just like throwing that shit out there like, oh, you woke up, thank the Lord. This is the stuff that's like, okay, I see how you acted under pressure. I see how you can calm me, how you can do this. And I need to explain that I'm grateful for you for doing that. God. Baby. Funny thing about falling in love. And she still loves him and it's very sweet. Morning when I woke up, you barely said a word to me. You're a magical human being. I can't say it enough. And when I say those words, it feels like there's resistance. Bro, remember yesterday when she smiled and you were actually standing up for yourself? And today when she said she knows she's being unpleasant, she'd probably be way more 
willing to have this conversation if you don't call her things like a magical human being when she herself said she's unpleasant? All right, you know what? Go with your thing. Feels like those words don't have an impact when I say them. How is someone supposed to react when you say the words, you're a magical person? Are they supposed to pop out of a hat and be like, woo? We need to be, like, more open with each other. Mm -hmm. So ask a straight question. Do you want children in the future? Motherfucker, that's not... <sighs> Jesus Christ, can you fix your relationship before you ask questions like that? Bro, ask a straight question. We're fighting. We don't... Our relationship's on the rocks. Do you want children or not today? Figure that out. You haven't gotten past the fact that you guys are even compatible. You don't even know that yet. And he's like, well, are we doing this children thing? I probably won't be able to decide about having children until I've decided about us. Don't even act like that's not something that she would have said. I'd be so shocked if she was like, yes, I'll have kids, but I don't know if it'll be with you. Like, <laughs> bruh. For Christopher, then I actually do. What I've slowly come to realize is whether this is enough to actually get married. Anyway, back to Amelia and Lucas. Presumably, after their non-conversation and going to bed, I don't know if anything has got resolved. The last thing we know about these two is that he said that <laughs> she deserves a good man, but he's walking in the door as happy as ever, as if everything has changed. I don't know what happened. Come here. Check this out. <laughs> what? Check this out. It's a fucking bag. I picked this shit up. You deserve a better man. I'm gonna take this bag and leave now. <laughs> I got dinner. It's entrecote with some rosemary. It looks really tasty. I'm really pleased. Two things. One, I figured out that entrecote is another name for steak. I'm gonna start calling it entrecote from now on because it sounds like something I'd put on my car. And two, that looks like someone put grass on top of like meat that hasn't been cooked before. Oh my God, do you want to poison this woman? She does deserve a man that doesn't want to kill her every dinner. Thanks for the nice surprise. Welcome. Fantastic. Thanks for the delicious food. Maybe she was trying to poison him by kissing him like that because she said thanks for the delicious food. So now I know she's a liar too. Oh God, I don't know. Maybe the entrecote helped entrecote their relationship to a better one. I, I don't... So, it's the next day. Besides the entrecote, Katya and Christopher have been sleeping apart from each other. Christopher took the couch, I guess, and he wakes up, but he finds Katya missing. You abandoned me. Thank you. Thanks, Love is Blind. Thank you. As usual, whoever's controlling the songs, I get that she left. You don't have to have someone singing the words. And basically, Christopher looks like Jesus if uh, he got triple-crossed or something. She's gone and I'm here. So that actually makes me really sad and wary. I don't have the faintest idea what's going on. It really breaks my heart. It is pretty sad that she left. Uh, I mean, she didn't really give him any... That That is... That's a shit thing to do regardless of how good or bad your relationship is. You probably should say the words, I'm leaving. This is happening. Yeah, you can't leave your partner or eat just anyone in the dark it's just not good to do so but they're not the only ones having problems because swedish jim slash oscar is having another problem he's got mouth diarrhea and he just cannot stop talking and mira can't start talking which puts a big dent in their relationship getting things done yes i'm a bit behind then i won't disturb you i'll just make my sandwich is he does that how sandwiches are made what is that sound? <laughs> so Did you see that Elon Musk's new rocket exploded? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that's, that's not, that should be a news report. Like, did you hear Elon Musk's rocket exploded? Sources are saying, oops. On to the, on to sports. I think that everything from the time that it that it even left the platform was seen as a step forward. I think it was airborne for four minutes. Ah, one of those guys, huh? It's not the worst thing in the world. You just gotta sometimes be like, hey, I'm working. Do me a favor, shut up. All right. 
This is because you're living in the same place. If you're both walking from home, get two different rooms, you know that's your work office, come out have a communal room. It's not a hard, this is not the worst problem in the world. You know, the dude does have some very weird conversation for someone from Sweden. He's very concerned with American stuff. I don't get it. To Do you think Biden will run for another term in office? Do you see what I mean? Do you think Biden will run for another term? Because if he does, that will affect Sweden in no way at whatsoever. That would be cool. <laughs> Bro, just, you don't even need to say anything to this guy. He's fully engaged in his own conversation and shit. He's just fully just having this conversation. You don't need to even participate. I think that the main difference between me and Oscar, I used to think that it was our cultural differences. But now I think it's our fucking emotional differences. This guy can't shut the hell up. That's an emotional problem. <laughs> I know that the main difference is that he's so extroverted. I sometimes just want to be by myself. I see that our big challenge is how do we make this work? Fair, fair call, fair situation, fair way to deal with it. If you're gonna issue it as a challenge, hopefully you guys can talk it out and see maybe there's a way to do this. Like, I mean, I don't think you'd be the first two people to be introverted and extroverted. I think opposites do attract and can work out, so. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like I said, this guy just makes some random Biden comments every now and again. <laughs> it's fine, I guess. Ah, <sighs> okay, so Sergio has always piqued my interest as to where he lives because I've always wondered what a DJ slash football coach would live in. Like, is it a soccer ball with a spinning record or something? I don't, I know Shrek lives in Swamp. I wonder where he lives. Now we get to find out. He goes to his apartment and it's not what you think. Or maybe it is, honestly. Like, I don't think I could have predicted how, how weird it is. Close your eyes. I'm scared. And? Ooh. Exciting. Shoes off? Well. He's got a home sweet home thing that like five feet in the house, you know you're actually home. Probably people are so drunk they don't know they're at the house until they're way too far in it. Good stuff, Sergio. An unusual style. Mm -hmm. Unexpected. Did you inherit it? No, I saw it somewhere and thought it was cool. It's a bit unexpected. So Amanda is very like taken aback. She thinks, okay, DJ, Calvin Harris, football coach, some guy. That's probably really good career. So he should probably have this penthouse apartment. Meanwhile, it looks like something your grandma decorated. Is there an antique smell in here? Or is that because I'm looking at the chair? That's not my vibe. It's not, no. Bro, she was looking at the chair. He just sat in it too. He was like, this is my favorite chair. I found it in a retirement home. Old people used to sit on it. I was like, stand up. And then I sat on it. He's just sitting on it so comfortably, like listening to Amanda being like, this house is very unique and weird. There's a strange smell in here. <coughs> <laughs> is that a little bedroom loft inside a kitchen? Yes. Yeah, just when you didn't think things could get weird and out of this world, it turns out this man sleeps in his kitchen. He's literally the joke of what uh, any man would make if he was referring to a woman back in the day. This is not where you want your bedroom, a kitchen. <laughs> But I guess if you want a sandwich, you can get it. Show the way. Yes, yeah, so I sleep here. It's like here. a small cat ladder. What an unusual <laughs> flat. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, like, I don't know if it's a common thing to have a bed above a kitchen, but can you imagine being like, ah, oh, I want some eggs, and then just reaching down and getting some? That's, I don't know, man. Whoever built this is weird. What's wrong with that? Ouch. Look out. Watch your head, darling. Lord, the lifestyle. <laughs> I gotta be honest, he's 37 years old living in that. Like, this dude is so comfortable. He's so confident. If I was living in that, like, I feel kind of like, damn. I don't know if it would be easy for me to bring a girl over and be like, hey, this is where I live. Where do I sleep? Oh, this is gonna be a treat. Let's go to the kitchen. I know you asked where I sleep. Let's go to the kitchen. Something went wrong when they built it. Yeah. We have to discuss living arrangements. Oh my God, I'm going to fall. This is one of those homes you can absolutely completely say needs a woman's touch. It needs a boulder's touch, actually. I don't know who the hell built this. <laughs> oh my God, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I think I was in a state of shock. 
Shut up. I know you don't know what to say, but you're sitting in that antique chair right now. That's a comfortable chair. Everyone's sitting in it. Don't lie. The chair grows on you, doesn't it? Are you okay? I'm traumatized by your kitchen layout. I honestly thought an older person lived here. No. And left their furniture. He is 37. I mean, this could be like older than you think. I don't know. Maybe he just likes old people and the stuff they sit on. Maybe he just knows that old people can't reach the kitchen bedroom that he's in. So in case of an old person zombie apocalypse, he'll be fine. I like it. Love is a complex thing between... Sock. People who are supposed to respect each other. Oh my god. Uh, Amanda hurt him so bad that Sergio got philosophical. He started saying shit like love is a complex thing, bro. Sometimes people don't like your kitchen bedrooms. They don't respect the hustle of having a bedroom in your kitchen. Wake up, eat, go to sleep, it's all the same thing. I have no excuse for my reaction to his apartment. The next day, Sergio is sort of back offish with Amanda. He doesn't like the fact that she's not a fan of his apartment. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I would have laughed myself. Uh, I don't even think that her reaction was unwarranted, but clearly she understands the man is hurt and she basically says, okay, that is the place that he lives in. I probably shouldn't have done that. She even says she was ashamed of herself. He said, I need some space. No matter what it looked like, it was still a part of him that I was laughing at. It was his place, his home. I've seen so much American Love is Blind where the girl is like, you live in that piece of shit? Oh my God, just die. And then that's his normal comment. Guys are like, oh, you know, it is. This dude is like, I have an old telephone from the 1800s. If I make a call, I'll literally reach people in their grave right now. And she laughed and, and still somehow understood that she was like, man, this is his home. I shouldn't have done that. That's crazy. And I'm sitting there and genuinely having this laughing fit. I can only say sorry and be ashamed. I'm ashamed of myself. So she's a bit sorry and hopefully they actually, with a little space, reconcile. Because it's not the end of the world, it's just the end of his kitchen bedroom. <laughs> Let's be real. Mira, what would you choose? To be deaf for the rest of your life or blind for the rest of your life? Oh my God, are you the Riddler? She's just sitting there and he's like, I thought of some questions today. If you had one arm, would you rather play tennis or one basketball arm? Or would you just have one arm basketball? And what's your reasoning? Oh, he says, show you're walking too. He's like, what's your reasoning? Don't just tell me what you do. Tell me why and show how you got to that answer. <laughs> he really thought of these questions. I would rather be deaf. Do to you me. like silence? I love silence. How is that a match? No, but because you know. Because I'm not particularly quiet. Then you hate silence. Yeah. This dude really got affected by the word silence. Just saying silence made him like, Ooh, I don't know how to not talk. Do you think he's like, talks to her till he falls asleep or something? Silence is a pretty important part of a relationship, I feel. This dude is, is just not the silent type, I guess. I don't understand how in a social context you're supposed to not talk. And we decide to basically just sit and be quiet. I don't know if I want to call this a social context. Damn, he called him and his wife a social context. That's half cute, half disturbing. <laughs> I'm in a social situation right now. It's me and my wife hanging out at home. Can you imagine saying you have social anxiety and the only other person in the room is like your spouse? And you're like, Ugh, I don't want to talk to that guy. Woo. Well, now I think you're taking it a little far. I'm not suggesting that we're just going to sit and stare at the wall. Which is what Love is Blind actually was for the first few episodes. Ironic, I know. And I'm quite an analytical person, so when there's something I don't understand, I'll do everything in my power to try and find a solution. But it sounds like you don't want to understand, so let's leave it. Yeah, the only issue here with the Swedish gym is that he don't understand. There's no solution to being silent. Like, you don't have to necessarily find a solution. If you're not okay with it, maybe a coping mechanism, perhaps, but, like, it's not an actual issue to be silent with your partner. It doesn't mean they're mad at you, necessarily. Sometimes it's just the fact that you're able to let them reach charge their battery is actually kind of a, a nice thing that they're able to be silent. I'm going to have to protect myself soon because I'm getting hurt. I feel so strongly for this woman and I like her so much, but I don't get anything back or I get very little back. Oh yeah, okay, dude, I don't know what to tell you. Like in many situations, I don't understand what the hell is going on with her, but in this particular one, she just wanted to be quiet. 
You know, it's not a big deal, bro. <laughs> Put on some headphones, game, do something. You'll be fine. Then she'll be like, oh, we haven't talked in a minute. And then you'll be like, oh, really? And then you start building up these walls that you've told yourself should be torn down. I don't know how much longer I can take it. I'll break down soon. Crap, all she said was I want a little silence. This guy's like, this is the end of the world, okay? First of all, you didn't tell me which you'd rather be, deaf or mute, or what is it? I said blind, not deaf or mute. That's the same thing. I'm just a bit angry right now, Mira. All right, from one crazy guy to the next, we move on to Christopher and Katya, and Christopher looks very concerned, but he's out in a park. I think he's meeting Katya. I don't know, I guess she ran away, but somehow he got her contact and she's ready to meet him again. Maybe she just needed space, although it's hard to say that when she actively took her two bags. <laughs> You just left me. Do you get how upset I was when I woke up there? You can't just leave me hanging like that all the time. How often did she do it? Oh my god, he said all the time. Like every morning she like takes her bags and is like, I'm out of this place. And they meet at the park for lunch and they're like, ah, you, you can't keep doing this. And then she does it again every morning. What am I doing wrong? I feel like I'm going crazy. Do you want me to sit on the couch at home and cry and feel sorry for myself and think that I'm being a complete idiot? That's not her fault. Like, you know, it's really shitty that she did that. But you can't say things like, do you want me to cry myself to sleep on the couch feeling sorry for myself? That's that's a you thing. That's uh, what you did really hurt me. I think that that's really inappropriate and I don't feel good about this. This is not a, do you want me to feel pain? <laughs> well then don't leave me. You're always trying to find flaws in me, but you don't have to be ashamed for not being in love with me. Can I tell it from my side? If you want to know. I wasn't done, Christopher. Damn! Christopher getting wrecked as usual. She wasn't done, Christopher. Now, if you just stand up to her, she's probably gonna fall back in love with you. Just... No, sorry. You're so damn condescending sometimes. Sorry. Okay, uh, all right, that's not the way. That's actually not at all what I was trying to say. That's just, now you're just sounding like passive aggressive. That's way different to standing up for yourself. It's your way or the highway. I don't think that you see what you're doing here. I don't think you see either. I'm not ashamed for not being in love with you. I'm really not. Normally when you see people on a park bench, you're like, oh, they're in love. This one is like, whoa, <laughs> stay away from this bench. It's about to get wild. She just straight up said she's not ashamed and she's not in love with him. I guess she saw Christopher and physically it just wasn't her thing. Proving that the show is absolutely not applicable in a country like Sweden where everyone seems to think that the way you look matters more, so. Right now, I don't feel like I'm in love. Okay. I don't know why they woke up, but they got up from that bench and moved over to another one. They were like, we, we figured out we're not in love in this bench. We'll use this bench to make it worse. They're just going from bench to bench for some reason. I'm sorry, it's a lawn chair. Very much more romantic setting that can be used to show the end of a relationship, I guess. What a lovely circumstance that is. I assumed she said she's not in love. Everything was like, oh, okay, well, see ya. But they, they're they sitting down again, so I don't know what this is about. I saw that you're not wearing the engagement ring. Oh, we're just going back in time, aren't we, brother? <laughs> I'm not in love. I saw that you moved out of the house recently. What's that about? So when are we getting married, huh? It didn't feel right to wear it. What do you feel? It hurts to see that you're not wearing yours, but it feels like you already made your decision a long time ago. Yes, yes. And for some reason, both of y'all let the summer like hot dogs. It's really sad that it got to this point where it took so long for you guys to have a, a discussion that would pro like say Christopher was a few weeks into it and he was like, my love. And she's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. God, don't call me that, I'm not in love with you. Then he would have had one day to be like, damn. Then it probably would have been way better off. Now, because neither of you could communicate that, it got to the very end where something had to be addressed, something had to give, and this is what it's gonna culminate in. Then he pulls out a cock ring. <laughs> <laughs> like an evil villain, he does the evil villain move. He looks at her and he's like, fuck at this ring. That's how you end a relationship. This is the hottest fight in Love is Blind Sweden. Christopher did not do many baller things, but that, 
That was some hard shit right there. <laughs> that was good, man. And that takes us to episode eight. Whoa, we're down to the last two. So I don't think Katya and Christopher are gonna make it to the aisle. I think that's that for them. We've already lost one couple then. Four are left. I feel disappointment and just an enormous amount of sadness. Oh shit, look at that combination. That's amazing, man. I'm sad it wasn't right, and also I'm sad that Christopher isn't the one. I had this person I met who I wanted to move forward with in life. In each relationship that you go in, in life, you learn something either about that person and hopefully something about yourself that takes you closer to the person you're going to be with. If, if you're lucky enough to find that person right off the bat, that's amazing. I like to believe that as hard as it is, that's the life lesson that's teaching you, this is what I'm not gonna settle for and this is what I want. And hopefully both of them learn a little more about themselves, because I learn about them just by seeing them interact in this relationship. And I think it's not for nothing. So hopefully both of them gain something from it. So, but she confirmed to me that I'm not enough. It's, Im okay, really important to know, you might, you're not enough, but you have to put down the words for her, because you are absolutely, and I hate to be nice here, enough for someone. You are completely enough. Everyone is enough for the right person. Your right person may be a person who's blind and doesn't like looking at fashion. I don't know. I'm just saying you are more than enough for someone. Definitely just not this person. And that is okay. It's absolutely okay. That's what hurts me the most. I really wish her all the best in life and love. All the best. He's, he's a nice dude, like he's seriously, he's, he's gonna find someone who appreciates that more than Katya. And Katya hopefully will find someone who she can gel with a bit better as well. And that's just how it works sometimes. But let's move on to the actual people who are still couples. <laughs> How do you feel now that you're getting married? I don't know how to answer that yet. It feels a bit weird to stand here and choose wedding clothes when, honestly, I'm not 100% there. Oh, damn, look at the way Sergio is looking at Lucas. He's like, you disgust me. You not don't know? Just say no like the rest of us. Imagine that she wasn't there when you woke up tomorrow. I would be very sad. What do you feel about being here then? It's fun to get to see her in a dress. You're glowing now, check out your smile. This scene is literally the reason why I can differentiate between Christopher and Sergio in terms of how their communication styles get them to where they actually are in relationships. This dude saw Lucas saying that he doesn't know and unlike Christopher who would be like, you should know, just know. You should treat her like a queen. Instead of that crap that doesn't actually help people, Sergio actually made him realize that maybe he does want this woman more and did it in a way that doesn't feel judgmental. It also got him to the point where he's like, yeah, yeah, I do love her. And it was just a way better way of dealing with situations. There's gonna be so many times when you don't think what people are doing is the right thing, but it's not your decision. The best thing you can do is help them get to where they need to go. Good work, Sergio. What a redemption arc for this fellow. He's a good guy. He just lives in a kitchen, so he's like a troll. He's an upper troll. So? She lets me be myself, but she doesn't just roll over. Right. It stimulates me. It's amazing to be with someone who dares to say what she thinks. Okay, so I guess on the other side of the wall, you get a uh, Swedish gym, Asuka over here, who's like basically giving Mira the props for like standing up for herself by saying you can wear things that are not chinos. This dude is literally came from the factory or something. She had to like reset him and be like, hey, you can think freely. You don't have to wear chinos every day. I've never had that. Like, Oscar, can't you see it this way instead? Like clothes, she'll say, maybe you don't have to be dressed for work when you're not working. She opened his mind up to things like, maybe you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to live in a suit, Oscar. Did you know that? Did you know you don't have to constantly dress in a suit? You don't have to sleep in a fucking suit? Are you dying? Just think about it, Oscar. He, eventually he was like, oh, damn. Okay, so I guess Mira is really helping him and he appreciates that. Good stuff. She opens up a completely new door there. Exactly, and I love that so much about her. I don't at all feel like she's been trying to change me. Yep, yeah. uh, so the next scene is, of course, trying on wedding dresses, all the girls and people are like, you look so beautiful. I would love to see a scene where someone comes out and she's like, you're fat, you're like a whale, bitch, what? Someone takes a chair, just... That would be a good scene, but inevitably, everyone thinks everyone's beautiful. Good, sure. Oh, such beauty. 
Whoa, beauty. For me, it's not worth it. Okay, after beauty, there's finally one scene that I actually could put in with Rasmus and Chrysalis. They have been uneventful, but also very into each other. Nothing bad there. Like, I didn't have much to say except for the end. But Chrysalis and Rasmus check in on the other couples, and they basically confide in each other who they think will say yes and no at the wedding. And I want to see what you guys think at this point. I know what I think and let's go through them. You said that you think we're the only two who will get married. Yeah, I haven't seen anything that shows me Mira's in a place where she can say, I do, to Oscar. So Rasmus basically says, we're the only one who are fully invested and are going to say yes. He thinks that Mira is not as into Oscar as he is into her, and I, I agree, I think so. Rasmus one for one there. We're like polar opposites in our relationships. If I was Oscar, there's no way I could handle it. What makes you think the other couples won't say I do? Lucas is not there yet. Oh, damn. Rasmus two for two. I mean, Lucas literally tells everyone besides his own partner that he's not there yet. So that, that was pretty easy. But yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And that's sad for Amelia. He has made it clear that he's found it challenging to locate his feelings. With Sergio and Amanda, there's so many ups and downs, like, all the time. Okay, okay. I think he could be three for three, but Sergio's like Shrek. He always does it in the end. I know that's not Shrek's tagline and has nothing to do with actual Shrek, but in my head, Shrek always does it in the end. That's that's how I see Shrek. He, he gets it done, man. What? I don't know, but he gets it done. So I feel like Sergio's gonna get it done. He might not say yes. He might say yes 10 weeks later, but he's gonna get it done. There has been too much going on there. Too many ups and downs. I guess that's not always a negative. I suppose they could surprise me and say I do, but I don't think so. Hey, look, Sergio's like Shrek, full of surprises. Everybody knows the one thing in Shrek that we like is that he's full of surprises. He's like an onion. He's got layers. Sergio has layers, and let me show you about the layers that he has. I'm about to peel back some of this shit right now. Sergio and Amanda are going to the movies, and Sergio is touched by the fact that he sees himself, because the movie's them. You excited? I'm so excited about the movies, madame. Aww. Gentlemen. Hey, he may be old-fashioned and have an old cord phone in his house, but he's old-fashioned in the good way, too. He opens the door for the lady. That's nice. I like that. How do you feel? I feel good. It'll be strange to see you at the wedding next time. I don't know how many weeks we've known each other. A few minutes. <laughs> yes, minutes. Which is uh, really rare, and congratulations that you even do that. So good for you, Amanda. Can carry on. In the pods, it felt like he didn't fully open himself up. I think it's really important to be yourself and not put up a facade. What sort of film do you think it is? Okay, you know, Sergio, nothing of his is new. First of all, it's gonna be old. You know that. Secondly, how did you both go to the movies and both of y'all don't know what you're watching? Who the hell set this up? I thought this was a romantic gesture by Sergio or maybe Amanda. Apparently, neither of them did that. Imagine if they were just screening random Love is Blind movies and people were like, what? It is a, it's a Love is Blind setup from them meeting each other. And it's very cute. It's probably one of my favorite moments in the whole series, actually. It's very rare do you actually see love in its truest form. And sometimes you get a glimpse of how people really, really look. And it, it strips back all the adultisms and all the responsibility. And they're just children, just enjoying something very pure. It's pretty easy to see that here. Hey there. Hello. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> Oh. oh my god, they, they're actually such a perfect- she laughs like him. She has her mouth open like a fucking clown at a drive-thru as well. Holy crap, I found what they have in common. What's your star sign? I'm a Taurus. I don't know much about those things. Me neither, I wish I did. So why did you want to know? No, but like, you never know, what if it's, uh, yes. Wow, fucking Casanova over there. What's your star sign? Taurus. Do I write down Taurus? What? 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 Okay. I don't know what it does. I heard gulls like star signs. He had no idea what he was asking. This dude literally took all his riz from his like nephew who's like 15 and he's like, tell me how to get a girlfriend. Come on to me, you've had a couple. I'm still waiting for my first. What, star sign? All right, what's your star sign? I don't know, I don't know why. Who am I talking to? Amanda. Is it really? Older than I thought. What? Not like that. <laughs> oh, holy shit. <laughs> God, she laughs so fucking hard, bro. Look at his eyes. He looks like a demon, man. God. I'm completely. It's not a feeling. 
Oh, Amanda. <laughs> you knew that happened, bro. You like looking at it like, what's gonna happen? Oh, she kissed him. I mean, me. Oh, this dude is actually watching it like a movie. You hear about people who are doing so well. You see the movies, and now I'm there myself. So it's just pure happiness. In a very sweet moment, like there's no other way to say it, this dude is very touched to see his journey of love. And uh, he says something that most of us think. Sometimes you see people and you envy that. You just want it. And his time has come. 37 long years of being a fucking DJ. <laughs> and, and then transferring to football coach because that somehow translates. And he finally found love. So uh, he, he's done it, man. Couldn't have found a better person, too. But it's a bit like I have to pinch myself to understand that this is actually as good as it is. We'll make sure you get a ring on that finger. <laughs> She's going to kill him if she tells him jokes, because he's actually, he laughs to the point that it looks like someone punched his gut and the air starts getting expelled out of it. So she got to watch that humor, otherwise he's going to die of laughter, literally. Uh, so it seems like Amanda and Sergio actually might be doing pretty well, contrary to everyone's beliefs. However, it is Sergio. The slightest thing could just turn his world upside down, so we'll see. But Mira and Oscar are talking as well, and they, they've made it pretty far. Did this far, Mira. I think when you're scared, everything feels bigger than it is. I'm just trying to answer for myself if, if I'm sure enough. Uh, Mira basically says she doesn't know if she's sure, which is what Rasmus said pretty much all on point. And now we're talking about Lucas and Amelia, which I just want to know if he's told her anything. I'm so confused about this relationship because it goes from, I just want to see her with a better man to, I cook steak. I don't get where they are in their relationship. And I can truly really see you and me having such a great life together. And it's definitely a different kind of love too. We don't have the completely crazy upside down chaos kind of love. Oh my God, this is a horrible speech. I'm in love with her, but not in the conventional way. You know how other people are head over heels? Well, I'm sort of like blindfolded and I'll get to it when I get to it kind of love. Like she's okay. That's why I love her. She's sturdy. She gets the job done, like Shrek. I just feel so warm and safe with you. And like I want to build a family and a future with you as well. I feel at home. That's a lovely thing to say, Lucas. It's also pretty out of left field. Did you ever wonder why he said it and also why he sounded like he was from Detroit Become Human? Because he's saying it like AI and stuff. I feel home with you, Amelia. I don't feel bad. Entrecote is good. So are you. That's great that we agree. <laughs> All right, so they're kissing. I guess they're back together. I don't, this is like the Ross and Rachel of Sweden, man. I don't know. Oh my God, it's only one dag till Brolop. I guess they're, they're getting married real soon. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers. 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 So at the bachelor party and the bachelorette party, things happen. The girls do karaoke night and a few other things at the bar. The guys go to a sauna and then jump into an ice lake. Yo, Vic SMS. I got a text message when I was back at my house and she was back at her house. I gotta be honest with you, man. If I was having my bachelor party, the last group of people I'd want to see naked are my homies. I don't know if that's what I want to do the day before I get hitched. I, I don't want to sit next to my boy and wonder if my chest hair is bigger than his. Like, I don't, I don't know. And her text message said that it feels like this whole bubble from the experiment has just been this fever dream kind of thing. Okay. But it's been a roller coaster ride for Mira since the beginning. Sergio has left the building. He has checked out. He's done. Sergio is just in another realm. Everyone else is listening. Sergio is gone. He's gone to the ball game. This is over that she might say yes i love you but that a marriage is too much to handle yes In everything i do i have to be completely sure ah uh, yeah well it's the episode in like eight nine sort of thing where they drive the ending home where they're like will they won't they they're sort of getting people to try and second guess themselves they're even going to do it to chrysalie and rasmus which is like for eight episodes there they've had no issues they're going to make it seem like any of the couples could break up at any moment so i feel like the choices you make the ones that you're thinking off in your head will they won't they stick with those you have to be 100 percent before you go into something and i'm not there yet then it feels a bit scary and i think what if i say no because i'm not ready but i still want him in my life then that would be pretty adequate since you're on a show called love is blind and you only had four weeks to decide whether to marry someone so i guess in this circumstance you'd be fine are we good good oh. Kendrick Lamar of Sweden, huh? This is what ABBA used to do before they started singing. I never thought I would see Swedish rapping, but here we are. 
Here we are. So we've prepared a little quiz for you all called, Do You Know Your Future Wife? Ah, shit. So, I guess at their bachelor party, they're also being quizzed on a, sh on a thing called, Do You Know Your Future Wife? Hopefully, he doesn't pull out one after that and saying, Do You Know Your Current Wife? Then, it would, then people would be fucking in trouble there. But I guess now people are going to see if they know their wives. I probably know her better than anyone else knows their partner here. What does your future wife think is the most annoying thing about you? Have you got an hour? This is awful. Ah, so yeah, the guys are playing that game. Abrasmus basically, he's like, yo, I know everything about Chrysalie there is to know about her. Sergio's like, yo, my wife thinks I suck. And then back to the bachelorette party. They're listening to themselves sing or rap, and it's horrible, and they're subjecting us to this crap too. It's only been a few weeks. And even though it's been five or six weeks since we were in the pod, it's still only been like two weeks that have been really good. Damn, two weeks and you're gonna decide whether you wanna spend the rest of your life with that person. That's that's a tough decision. I understand where Mira's coming from. Where I've taken this seriously. When is your future wife's birthday? Easy, mine has two. If I can get extra points. That's not even possible, but all right. Unless, she, unless she's born on the 28th of Feb, is she? Wow, somebody better check that out. <laughs> okay, Oscar. Anyway, uh, everyone is answering questions. They ask Rasmus what date uh, his wife's birthday is. He says Monday, and, and Sergio just cannot get enough of that joke. That is the funniest shit he's ever, it was as if Richard Pryor came down from heaven to tell that joke, and Sergio was like, that is so funny, I'm gonna bust my gut laughing. We celebrated that in our apartment, so I should know when it is. Monday, <laughs> Monday about a week ago. I've never heard someone laugh harder at the word Monday before. Nobody's ever said the word Monday and got that reaction. That's the most golden reaction I've ever heard for just saying Monday. This dude is wow. This is like that SpongeBob episode when he's like, I thought of something funnier than 23, like 24, and then start laughing. <laughs> What's the color of your future wife's eyes? Very light blue. That's the humor Sergio laughs at, like days of the week and time. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because your fiance answered green. Well, joke's on you, bold man. You said what is his future wife's eyes gonna look like? So, just right there, you just fully cracked open the case. He's gonna dump Crystal Lee, he's gonna take someone who has light blue eyes. You figured it out, Sherlock Holmes, okay? He's, <laughs> he's gonna find a light blue eyed sweetheart. The guys had a quiz about us. Nah, I'm joking. Chrysalie gets really mad because she's unable to see past the fact that he can't see that she doesn't have blue eyes, which she doesn't. I, I looked at her eyes. They're not blue. Bruh, you need to get your eyes checked. But apparently the eyes make her cry. She's like that absolutely mortified that this man doesn't know her eye color, that she's rethinking her whole marriage. We are getting married, so that's great. When I answered the questions, I thought, I've told him all this. He will ace this. It's not a test, bro. You make it sound like, you know, if he gets 100%, he'll actually get married. But you have to tell him your eye color. He didn't look at your eyes long enough to know it. Maybe he is failing. The quiz result made me think about things. What have we been doing these last few weeks? Have we just found ourselves in each other's safety and intimacy? Yes, holy shit. You don't have to worry about eye color then. You could have no eyes and he'd probably still be like, I like you. So that shouldn't be the worst problem, but I'm looking at her eyes now and they're not, bruh, how you guess blue? They're closer to gray than anything. If this man doesn't actually have any idea about who I am or what I like, then we have a huge problem. I feel like you're taking this a little, you know, a little bit too. He, he didn't know your eye color or maybe you guys have a difference about blue and green. I know I sometimes say blue and people are like, that's green, so I get it. Uh, but you don't have to throw away your marriage. You're acting a little bit of, you're, you're being a Sergio right now, bro. This is a bit too much over such a small detail. But I'm feeling dizzy. Wait, would you like some water? Yes. She's about to pass out from eye color. <laughs> She's just like, ah! Oh! <laughs> this is the type of woman who'll like get blue eyes just to like be like, okay, there, you were right the whole time. I got contacts. That's, that's exactly what he was talking about. It's a wake up call for me.
dying on one end, getting dizzy, the fact that he doesn't know her eye color. He's grinding up on his homie, like all bachelor parties should be. Sergio is laughing at that too because he finds this funny. It's a wake up call for me. Ah, oh, that's the worst bachelor party. We didn't have a stripper, so uh, we did have music and I know how to dance, so. Get them pants off, big boy. I'm gonna put my ding dong onto yours. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's bachelor parties. Well, we've come to the final episode. If you're actually still watching this and you haven't hated me yet or turned this off, congratulations, you have a problem. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but hey, let's finish this off. It's wedding time. Everyone's happy, everyone's coming to the weddings. Let's see if they say yes. Today, I'm a lot happier that I'm at this wedding as a guest instead of getting married myself because it didn't turn out for once. And you know what? Maybe this is a testament to how things work. Christopher is back. He doesn't have purple hair. He's wearing the scarf in a good fashion. It's a Gucci scarf. He's looking really nice for the wedding. I was kind of afraid he'd show up in a headband and have a guitar and start shredding right there and then. But he seems to be looking, looking decent, man. Looking okay, he's holding up. Not like we had hoped between Katya and myself, but no one is happier than I am. Do you, Chrisley, take rest? So I just skipped through most of the episode 10 or 9 of Love is Blind. It's just a bunch of recap and just yes, no shit until the very last moment and they draw it out. So I just cut all that fat out until the very end where they either say yes or no. Chrisley and Rasmus, yes or no? I'm pretty sure I heard everyone say yes. Let's see. Miss, to be your husband and to love him through good times and bad. Hold up. Every marriage, they said their full names. Does this guy not have a last name? He's he just Rasmus? That's his, Ras is his first name, Mus is his second? Or what? Because I've seen these Swedish people, they have like 10 names. This guy got one? That's baller. Yes. Never have I been more sure of an answer. Yes. You scared the shit out of me. Why? What? What even happened that made it seem like he wouldn't say yes? Okay, well, congratulations. Chris Lee and Rasmus, happily married. This is my dream wedding. Yeah. You're my dream girl. You're my dream and guy. And we're married now. <laughs> Best things happen without. Okay, so that's uh, their brolop. Now it comes to Amelia and Lucas's brolop. And I genuinely don't know at this point, are they going to find each other or not? Because God, like it's been up and down. Today's my wedding day. I ask you, Emilia Margareta Holmquist. I told you, they say their whole names except for Rasmus. There's like, Emilia Margareta Holmquist, Barresta, whatever. Or will you take Lucas, Fucus, Jukus to be your mucus man? And then they just got Rasmus. You take this Rasmus. It seems crazy. Also, he's wearing white for his. That's crazy, man. I, I, I didn't. White wedding. I mean, you know what I mean, but there's no black people there. Will you take Mats Lucas Gustafsson to be your husband and to love him through good times and bad? My answer is yes. Oh, I was like on 50-50 there. I thought she was gonna say yes, to be honest. Now comes the great question. Does this man say yes back? Hi. <clears throat> Had Here, today, and now, it's a uh, no. The fuck? Why would you preface it? He was like, uh, you're today, right now, in front of all these people, the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. It's a no. Why would you build her up like that, man? Then I'll go. That's gotta be one of the toughest moments on the show is like to build up someone, hype them up and then say no. Like as hard as it is for one person, the other person making the decision must feel like an absolute D-bag. So, whew, that's tough. I guess there was no entrecote at that wedding. Otherwise he would have said yes. I know. I'm not ready to say yes. Right now it feels heavy and light at the same time. Ah, uh, yes, just like two uneven butt cheeks. I get what you're saying, bro. The point is, you did the decision that you needed to. You, you made it. You got it. You sorted it out. It's a tough decision, but you, you have to make those. Love is blind, but love is also a real thing. And if you don't feel it, then you don't feel it. There are a thousand reasons to say yes, but my gut feeling, it said no. Don't say things like that, bro. This guy's like the opposite of romantic. There are a thousand reasons to say yes, and I picked the one reason to say no. It's a no for me today. I want to do everything I can to make my mom happy, as she has hoped for so many years that I would finally find someone. 
I, I kept the scene in there because I thought it was a very real moment. I think that uh, you get to a certain age because she was she's 34, and like sometimes you want to be like, okay, do this for my grandma, for my parents. Uh, I want to make everyone happy. Like, yes, I want to find the one, and I want them to be happy with the person I choose. And and I get that feeling, and I feel that it's it's a sad moment now, but a good one in the sense that hopefully the person you do find will be there for you and your parents and everyone else and fit those roles. Ah uh, yes, Amanda and Sergio's up. Now we get to see Amanda and Sergio, will they, won't they? This one I'm also 50-50 on, but like I said, Shrek always comes through, so I feel like Sergio will. He said he was going to buy more wax for this no, day. No, no, no. <laughs> He'll probably be drenched in wax. Bruh, she's 37 using wax. This dude is 14. Don't tell me he's not 14. He's using wax. He's, he's wearing bracelets, using wax, doing push-ups before a wedding. He's a teen. This dude is... This is his first girlfriend. Come on. With this look, I will definitely not get a no. I want to uh, make a toast. I'm so grateful that you're here. You come from very far away. Oh, okay. So Sergio is making a toast. He's got his sister there and his friends. And, and he's doing it in English. He's, he's switching styles a little bit. I like it. He's, he's also going for the classic look. He likes things classic, like his chairs and phones and beds. You're from Barcelona. You're from Portugal and Barcelona. And you're from everywhere, Robin. It is. Just like your wife and kid. Barcelona, right? Oh my God. <laughs> Don't say stuff like that right before the wedding. You're from Barcelona. Have you heard anything about it? Okay, good. <laughs> you're also from Barcelona? Please, tell them not to ever say anything. <laughs> Still far, and I'm very grateful for you being here. So, cheers for love. <laughs> Woo, cheers for love. Cheers. My favorite thing in the whole series. Cheers, cheers for, for love. love. <laughs> <laughs> He just, he cheers is it. He's not gonna say no now. He said, cheers for love. I like how he bends his head to the side every time he says some shit. That's, that's good. Did you ever think from that day that I told you that I was gonna end up here? Well, uh, I know love is blind, that's for sure. New name for the show. I know love is blind, that's for sure. That Come on, guys. Come on, love is blind. Make it a thing. I was afraid of you messing it up. I can tell you that I'm like a thriller movie. With me, you never quite know what's waiting around the corner. That's crazy to say before your marriage. You never know. I don't even know. I might say yes, I might say no, I might say cheers for love. I don't know. And in the presence of this congregation, I ask you, Amanda Sophia Yonengard, do you take Sergio Ignacio Rincon Robayo to be your husband? God, this man has more names than I thought. Sergio Ignacio Rincon Ribione Ribioso Rabai Fillet Steak to be your boyfriend man and then some. Do you take him? Because he said cheers for love. Do you really? You sure? Are you sure? And to love him in good times and in bad. If Amanda said no, I would think I'd just, I think I'd blow up. I never thought the, she would ever say no. She's not going to, but I, I just, had that thought like imagine if she just pulled one out like from everywhere and was like Sergio I've been waiting right till the altar to say this fuck you and then just leaves yes you scared everyone we got married <laughs> we're crazy love yeah. has won yeah love has won Lo love won it like Shrek love has won very good I'm I'm happy to see these two I didn't know if they were gonna make it I'm pleasantly surprised here Ah, okay, finally we got Mira and Asuka's brolop. Do you take Mira to be your wife? Yes. Do you take Oscar to be your husband? Of course I want to marry you. In a very weird surprise to me, Mira says yes to Asuka, which I just, I genuinely thought she was going to say no, I need more time. But turns out uh, she says yes and everything's good. So that was a pretty successful first season. I mean, they had three marriages one guy said no and one guy's a christopher so that wasn't gonna work it's really tough feels kind of heavy to do this in front of everyone but i wasn't ready today to say yes i think you appreciate that i'm honest with us yeah you know i appreciate that so at the end of everything, Amelia and Lucas do end up talking, and I just can't say this enough, unlike the American version, there's not some family affair where everyone's mad at each other. It's two people having an honest, mature conversation about the fact that maybe they weren't ready or this guy didn't feel this way. It's handled so much more maturely than America ever did. Of cake? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I've been thinking a lot about if love is blind or not. Uh, and at the end, they have the contestants sort of sum up 
the show and if they think love is truly blind. And they start with Christopher. I'm in love with Katya in there. I did feel those feelings that come with love. So yes, it is. I proposed to someone through a wall. Yeah, love is blind. He says love is blind, even though the experiment itself didn't work out. The fact that he did fall in love was the fact that it was blind. I don't regret anything. Absolutely nothing. And I ended it by showing Oscar dancing with the person he really loves, his grandma, or maybe his next date. I don't know who that is. The point is, that's how the show ends, and that is Love is Blind Sweden. So many people wanted me to take a look at the show because they said it was super dramatic, and when I initially saw the ratings of the show, it was lower than America's Love is Blind. I think Love is Blind had maybe one, maybe two good seasons in America before it started turning into really, really trash. And I'm saying that willingly ready to do the next season if it's decent. But I was pleasantly surprised about Sweden. I learned a lot about stuff that I didn't think I would. Not necessarily how people are different in that country because love is the same. I see a lot of similarities between different countries, but how they handle situations, how they communicate it, and how maturely they deal with things. I'm also really glad that most of the couples got married and the one that didn't seemed to talk it out. All in all, pretty successful experiment. And that's the show. Am I going to review another Love is Blind Sweden? No, because they're probably not going to have it. But I will tell you one thing. They did do the reunion, and everyone was together, except Nick Lachey, who doesn't exist in Sweden. Let's petition a thing to get Nick Lachey to be on Swedish Love is Blind, and then the Swedish girl to come here. I'm just saying, it could happen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that very long deep dive. And if you find your person, please don't go on Love is Blind, because then I'll have to do a show on you guys. Don't make me do that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Down in the dirt, that's where you find me. Drown in the bed, she's to the libraries. Love of my life, wearing my brown tea. You live and free.